I, I love the premise of the show. Smart people talking about dumb shit. I think it's dumb people talking about smart shit. Oh, we go where we're not supposed to go, baby. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Show. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yes, uh, welcome to another week of Brilliant Idiotness. And this week's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites to the online stores, the marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile. And it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag-and-drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase. Let's start the show. Hezzy! I'm so dumb, bro. Why? My wife just partnered up with this uh, company, this huge uh, company in like the the kitchen world, food world, Food Fifty Two, right? And it's like her first like huge partnership for Blister Peppers. Okay. And I went to order something. Fire name, by the way, Blister Peppers, right? I didn't realize that was your wife until recently. Let's go, <laughs> bro. Oh, it's a fire ass name, Blistered Peppers. So I went to go buy some shit to support because I want to support, and uh, I bought some shit. And uh, forgot to use her fucking code, bro. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> so now I'm going to have to buy more shit <laughs> so I can use the code so she'll man, that know. That is so stupid. That's stupid. Did I? Yeah, I'm stupid, man. No, you're not stupid, but that's stupid. Fuck. Like, you went there for, you had one job. Show one shit. job is to type in the fucking code. <laughs> Blister, yeah, go, How much go did you support. Spend? How uh, much did you spend? I bought fucking 10 things of the pasta. Refund it. I'm sure you can refund it. Uh, but now I'm oh, fucking hell. I refund that shit. Yeah, I might. What's Whatever. the code? What's the code? Blister 10, go to Food 52. Blister 10, 10% off. So but, uh, what do they sell? All kitchenware, that kind of stuff. Okay, now okay. they're getting into food, but it's a really interesting business, bro. Consumer goods, man. We got to get into consumer goods, Charlotte. Nah, you're right. Um, nah, it's, it's, the, it's, it's, I don't know. It must be that season. My wife is. Whoa, 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 nah, she's doing. She's she's about to do some of that same stuff. What's that? Oh, she's getting her. Yeah, I mean, it's not the it's not the kitchen stuff, but it's it's a, it's a consumer good. Uh, when it, when it when it happens, I'll of course I'll, I'll be doing do exactly what you just did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, salute to the salute to the wives in their coats. Yeah. <laughs> so how was your week, man? It was good, man. It went it went quick. It went quick. I don't even know if last week or this week I saw Duval. That was last week. That was last week because yeah, we spoke about week. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the so funniest then, shit in the world to me is watching Lil Duval work out. Lil yeah. Duval has never worked in out life. in his life. And now he has. It to. looks so. He don't even got gym wear. Yeah. It's like yo, he's it's like he's in there dressed like he's going to like the club yeah. or a comedy show, yeah. and he's working out. And it's, it looks like it's working though. Yeah. He he looks like he's healing very very nah, very he's fast, man. It back, man. How was how was uh, Kimmel, man? You had a big week. Yeah, Kimmel was great. You know what's so interesting? Um, where were you filming that? Brooklyn. He does it in Brooklyn once a year. Yeah, he does it in Brooklyn once a year. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, how come they don't do more late night shows in Brooklyn? And why does he go to Brooklyn? He's from, uh, I think he was born in Brooklyn. I think he was born in Brooklyn. He was raised in Vegas. Don't quote me on that. I know you, I know he was, he came up in Vegas, but I think that there's some connection to Brooklyn. Look that up for me, Alex. I think he was born in Brooklyn. Okay. But um, yeah, he was, right? Yeah, Jimmy Kimmel was born in Brooklyn. Yeah, so he, he I mean, yeah, he does it once a week. And, you know, it was a great show because, you know, of course, Run the Jewels is on there. Killer oh, Mike, Killer Mike, one of my top seven favorite rappers of all time. Salute to LP, the whole Run the Jewels. Amy Schumer was on there. So it's like, you know, we all, I, I kept, Mike's my guy. I got, I'm cool with Amy. Of course, cool with LP. So that was, it was just fun to do, man. Yeah. I remember we was having a conversation before we, the podcast started. We were talking about like how everybody in the podcast space has such a niche audience. Like, yeah. Like, brilliance has a niche audience yeah. that we have to bring together you know yeah. what i'm saying or flagrant has a niche audience that we have to bring people together it's like yeah. it's only a few podcasts that like people just know yeah i think i don't even when i say few i don't even know if it's few yeah it might be rogan yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> that like yeah. the mainstream audience knows i don't yeah. even know if they know rogan's a podcast they might think rogan's a talk show for that, yeah they might <laughs> so and i say that because uh i was shouting out because he was you know jimmy was asking me about the black effect and i i was i shouted out 85 south show and i shouted out you know, drink champs, and I shouted out uh, uh, all the smoke and horrible decisions. Crickets in the audience. So I go, 
Um, Wait, are you surprised that Jimmy Kimmel's audience doesn't listen to it's Brooklyn eighty five South Show? <laughs> I'm thinking Brooklyn. Yeah, but they just sold out Brooklyn eighty five South Show on September fourth. Yeah, but there's a different Brooklyn that watches Jimmy Kimmel than watches <laughs> eighty five yeah, South. Exactly. But well, that's what I said. I was yeah. like, damn. So nobody from it. I'm talking about at least one scream, bro. Yeah, like yeah. not like sixteen hundred people in the audience. Not one like oh. You, Sometimes you might shout out. I could shout out Blister Peppers and somebody like, oh, be yeah. one person. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. one person. So I'm like, oh, y'all not familiar? I'm like, oh, this gentrified Brooklyn, huh? You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Because boy, when I shouted out Judy Bloom, <laughs> They knew that shit immediately. <laughs> <laughs> when I shouted out Judy Bloom, oh my God. They went crazy? Oh, man. Oh, man. But it was fun, man. Salute to Jimmy. Salute to Jimmy Kimmel and that, that whole show, man. It was very, it's just interesting. Yeah. And Is then it? then your show last week, I saw some clips from that. What was last week? Shit. Oh, Ray J. Yeah. Yeah, we had Ray J on. I, saw some yeah, clips they, 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 I mean, listen, we had a 15 minute interview with Ray J. And I said this on my social media and I said it on Breakfast Club, but it's true. It's like nobody wants any problems with the Kardashian Jenner Mafia. The Kardashian Jenner Mafia rule television with an iron fist. Mm. And we did 50, it was a 15 minute interview with Ray J. That's why when Ray J, Ray J got mad at me Saturday morning, I understood why he was upset. You know what I'm saying? Cause I, and I actually wanted to hit him Friday to be like, yo, they edited a lot of this interview, but I'm like, you know what? I want to stir up nothing. If nothing needs to be stirred up, but you know, he got on uh, the gram Saturday and he was like, man, you corny. For, he was like, yo, you corny for this man. It's so lame. You're supposed to be my man. I respect you. And I wouldn't even have done the show if this and that. And I'm like, he had every right. He, he did. He publicly apologized right after. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But he, he had every right to be upset because you know, if you sit down with, you know, a TV show, and you're expressing some things that other people probably wouldn't let you express, mm -hmm. and the same thing happens where you think it's a safe space, you can see what that would upset you. You know mm. what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, so, so you know, like, I, like me, that's, that's my guy. So if he, you know, the conversation he wants to have, you gotta, you can, you gotta have that on Breakfast Club, or you gotta have that on a podcast yeah. somewhere. You know yeah. what I mean? Because <laughs> it's not happening on yeah. network television because Chris Jenner is a gangster. Yeah. Don't let nobody tell what you. What did different. they cut out? Can you tell us now that we're on this podcast? Um, the crazy part is it wasn't nothing that he hasn't said anywhere else. What'd he say? That, you know, there's 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 other tapes. It's like three it's like three tapes. Three tapes, you yeah. know. I think we saw one and then Kanye got Kanye one. got one and then it's like another one, but he said he said all of that before. And where are they? I don't know. That's a great question. Because I mean, they don't want to put out another tape where Kim is chomping meat, right? Does it matter? I mean, I mean, it probably matters to you because you're an adult now. Like yeah, the same way, the same way it matters to Ray J. Ray J's like, yeah. yo, I want, I don't want my kids to think like this is how I came up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, they know they're gonna see it one day, or at least their classmates are gonna tell them about it. They, they're talking about it now. I mean, really? I mean that's, that's why. That's why. I, Kim don't want it out there. So I get it. You know what I, I mean? mean? But also it's kind of like perfect timing because OnlyFans is so normalized that like a bunch of them kids, probably their mom or their aunt or their cousin is on OnlyFans. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like being naked for money yeah. is going to be so regular by the time. It's regular now. We need Islam, we bro. Like, <laughs> I'm serious, Three bro. It's too, it's, Three too, <laughs> it's too, it's getting too much, bro. Like, it's getting too much. What I don't like is I don't like people having to step down they step down from their job because of nudes. Why would anybody to have to do that? They are. And having to step down from elected positions because of nudes. Like, nudes, nudes is so regular that I don't know. You, you got to be a certain level of status for yeah, nudes to hit the timeline yeah. and people to care. Like, like if somebody was like, okay, you know, whose nudes would make us be like, okay, look, you know, what? shadows with the chat. Who? Right. Kamala. Well, see, that's different. I mean, that's, but that's the vice president. You know what I'm right? saying? Maybe. If somebody told I, you I to want to see the V in the president. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'm just telling you, but that's a good example. If somebody told you that the VP of the United States of America is busting it open yeah, yeah. on OnlyFans, yeah, yeah, yeah. send the goddamn link. Matter of fact, I'm going to subscribe. You got At to. At least for the day. Yo, you know? for real. Not because I want to see, but it's, it's the vice president. You know the what I mean? The nudes or the, the, the porn. The porn would be crazy. Yeah, I guess. I mean, you, talk, you checked people, out the Doze Out nudes? Yeah, not nudes, but I saw her looking thick. Whatever that was. I yeah, yeah. That, was that real? 
I don't know, but she was looking thick and she was looking in excellent shape. She like, had the been cheese. I thought yeah, it was yeah. just me. No, nah, no, nah, bro. <laughs> she black, bro. Like, let's just say what it is, bro. I, I thought say about it. it. I was like, like, maybe it's something to she, this black yeah, thing. She got she 25%, <laughs> man. She's 25. And you see where the 25 went? 100%. Dude. 100%. <laughs> I thought it was just me. I saw her in the airport. She wasn't cheeked up like that. That's what I I remember yeah, you showed me wasn't. that. I'm like, I've ne- all these videos we've seen of Rachel Dozar, I've yeah. never seen this before. No, nah, no. Nah. Well, all of a sudden, she get these cheeks from BBL, you think? I see my. Dr. Miami? Maybe Dr. Miami. But I do understand why they let her in the NAACP. Like, <laughs> the NAACP. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't you think? Like, because if she showed up to the meeting looking like that, they're not going, is this a white girl Man, you pretending said, to be black? Yo, he said that shit like there's a W in it for real. N-W-A-C-P. Like, the, the NWACP. <laughs> Ice Cube is the chairman. <laughs> you know, okay? It's like, what? <laughs> you didn't even say N double. He was like, N W A C P. Yeah, the, yeah the, <laughs> the National Women's Association. Yeah, the of niggas Africa. with attitudes and colored people. That's what you said. That's what you just said. N double A C P. Yo, oh, that's man. fire that the, the like the black, what is it called? What? What is it called? Like a black lobbyist association or something like that? NAACP? Yeah, but like what would you call the organization? Lobbyist. They're an organization. Just the organization. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fucking fire. Shout out to NAACP. <laughs> <laughs> but no, NAACP, yeah, dude. It just depends whose news it is, man. But uh, what you know, what else did Ray J say? What? Um... I don't even remember what else he said now, but I mean, listen, it ain't even about what he said. It's just the fact that, yo, if you sit down with somebody as an artist. Come on, tell us what we want, said, man. I really don't remember now. Stop I, it, I just bro. remember the three tape thing because that was it. I, I, what would the NAACP say? Well, oh, well, they kept that in. What'd they say? But no, because he was like, you know, he said, he said, no, as a black man. And I'm like, huh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Y'all know who y'all was sleeping with, man. Whoa. You and Kanye like to do that. You know what I mean? That's the my- snow bunnies, right? <laughs> Come on, yo. Salute the goat. Dr. Well, I'm talking Omar about the Kardashians. The snow, yeah, snow bunnies. That, hey, but they know who they be with. But who do they be with? They slept with the Kardashians. They did. But Ray had a good answer. What he said? I didn't marry her. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> he said, I didn't get her pregnant. Are you going to legally demand an apology? Or are you going to actually pursue a lawsuit? It's going to be some legal stuff happening. Okay. It's going to be some legal stuff. All right. Well, but just, and just think about it like this. Without me just going through all of the facts, right? I said what I said. I said what I said. It's crickets over there. No response. No, nothing. Nothing. How long has it been? Like two weeks? Silence. Nothing. Has Kanye said anything to you? Silence. Damn. <laughs> Damn. And they usually are the type of people that respond fast and then they try to like tear you right down, like right away. Yeah. It should say a lot from just that. You know what I mean? About what I'm trying to do and how I'm trying to survive. You know what I'm saying? As a black man, as a, as a father. The only thing I don't like when you and Kanye, y'all like to do the black man thing because it's like y'all knew, I never did the, y'all knew I who the women was. I never, I never did. The, I never, yeah. yeah. But I didn't, I didn't, I didn't marry her. I didn't marry her. You didn't, that's true. Yeah, I didn't marry her, dog. We had a relationship and I moved on. That's true. You know what I'm saying? This is my final question. If, if you had one wish, right? <laughs> How does this work out where there's an acceptable outcome for Ray J? I just want to clear my name, man. Ray J's the shit. But nah, Ray J, I mean, my, my whole thing is, man, like mm. when you sit down with somebody and you interview a man, they trust in you. It's a safe space. Present their words the way they want their words presented. So how do you make sure on your show that you can do that? On TV? Yeah. I can't. <laughs> so isn't that scary for a guest that's coming on to be interviewed? Like, uh, how they going to chop this shit? It, I mean, it depends. It depends what they're talking about. I think I think Ray J was a unique case, you know, because for whatever reason, people are scared of the Kardashian-Jenners or they're just always... Why are they scared of the Kardashian-Jenners? I mean... What's going to happen? It's, you're either scared of them or you want the relationship. Because oh, you don't scared know, of not having the relationship. That's right. You got to you want you got to make sure they at the award shows every year. You know what I mean? Uh, or you you might want them to be guests <laughs> on. You might want them to be guests on your other late night talk shows. You know what I'm saying? And I, I can't be mad at them wanting to preserve the relationship. You know what I mean? And you can't be mad at the Kardashians uh, for flexing their muscle. Exactly. A hundred percent. Yeah. Flexing protect their your muscle. brand. And that is a. That is a huge stain on their brand. If they had three sex tapes, the whole thing was planned. The mom was looking at the see, sex that's tapes. That's what's whack, though. Giving what, pointers and What shit. you just said is what, I, what reminded me what I wanted to say. Um, when you do those deals mm. for a company like, uh, what's the company called? Vetti, Vivid. Vivid. 
This guy's crazy. I don't know. But <laughs> well, what's the pornography company? Well, hey, do you guys know what the pornography company? I've never watched pornography before. What are you talking about? I can't remember the name of the company. I know it's with a V. Both parties have to sign off. So Kim had to sign off. Ray J had to sign off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is wrong with admitting that? Nothing's wrong with admitting. You, you, you actually look genius that y'all signed off on this marketed it, promoted it in a way that you actually made money and blew up off it. The fact that they haven't told the real story Crazy. is why we've had so many trash-ass sex tapes. Crazy. Because everybody thinks you can just do a sex tape, and leak it, it, and yeah. become the Kardashians. No. I was watching that's not that how it works. the other night, man. That shit was fire stuff. I've never seen it. You've never seen it, I've bro? seen bits and pieces, but I've never watched it. But we talk about how it might hinder Kim. It's hindered Ray J. Huge. Because think about it. If you, and you know, because you don't person, get any press, as, like positive press as a dude for a That's sex right. Date. That's like, right. You just get looked that's at right. like a porn star. That's right. That's Women right. get famous up there. That's that right. Shit. And what if you want to do bigger business? You know what I'm saying? And and it's like, let's just say Ray J has a company like Raycon, right? Yeah. Raycon is carried in different places. What if there's like a, a big, like, department store that wants to carry it, but they also do business with the Kardashians. So they're like, what? We don't want to insult the Kardashians. Let's ask the Kardashians if they want to share self space with Ray. What if they'd be like, no. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And you're saying that that might be happening? I'm just I'm just giving, putting out a hypothetical. So they blocking Ray J? I think, yeah, clearly. That's fucked up, bro. Hey, man. I mean, I just, I mean, it just is. Like, you, you're you on Love & Hip Hop. You can't tell your storyline. You know what I mean? But your storyline's playing out on... On their side? On their side. Oh, but yeah. you can't talk about it on so I Love & Hip Hop. So I his frustration. I get it. That, he got to come yes. on The Breakfast Club so we can talk about that shit, bro. Yeah. When is he going to do that? I don't or know. Brilliant Idiots. You or say, Flagrant. We would love to have you. He, he, I, I think Flagrant Ray would be good for We would love Ray. to have you. Flagrant would be good for We Ray. would love to. We're not worried about burning bridges <laughs> or destroying relationships. Okay? And we are not down with that snow bunny love. So you can talk about your regret. We need Ray J and we need Dr. Umar Johnson immediately. How can I go to Dr. Umar's show? I don't think that people... Umar. I love Dr. Umar Johnson. Umar, you got to do Flagrant, man. Ray J, y'all got to do I'm flagrant. being dead... To, like, you think it, it started off as a joke and now I'm like... I admire How can this you guy. not love Dr. Uma? Th th who's funnier? It makes me, it's, it's hard for me to write comedy because I go, nothing. God damn, you really took that bottle right there. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was fucking all this, crazy. All this talk. <laughs> what the? All this, all, this, all this talk is sucking cock. Yo, you was looking like, I had to show you how it's done. Bro. <laughs> Dude, that was gnarly, bro. <laughs> Holy shit. Imagine some calling somebody head game gnarly. That's joke. God damn. He's, you got to hit it like Trump. That's why Trump was so <laughs> delicate. He's like, they're not going to say, I'm sucking dick out here. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, listen, not only is Dr. Umar funny, he yeah. gets the fucking work done, bro. Oh, really? Bro, Dr. Umar's cool is, is there. Wait, is it? Bro, you got to go watch his Instagram page and his YouTube. He's inside the school. He's showing you what it looks like. He just did a block party there the other day. Let me tell you how ill Dr. Umar is. Is anybody being educated at the school? Not, I mean, it's, not, it's, it's still trying to get accreditation. I looked this shit up. What it's, type of school, though? Isn't it a high it's school? It's called the, uh, look at it, it's called the Frederick Marcus Douglass Garvey, Marcus Garvey Academy. For boys and for He's boys. He's got, the, the school is there. It's in Delaware. Yeah. It, I've, I've been donating. It better be fucking ready. <laughs> <laughs> How much did you donate? Did you put the code? Did you put the, did you use this code? One Bitcoin. One Bitcoin. <laughs> what the fuck, Alex? That, who did you type in? Dr. Umar's school name. Scotland That's just School, Scotland for, school veterans for Veterans Children. Children. See what I'm saying? No, right there, right there. See what I'm saying? <laughs> we are destined to be together, Dr. Umar Johnson. <laughs> Stop playing yourself. I'm the only snow bunny in your life. <laughs> put, Dr. <laughs> put Dr. Umar Johnson's school. Uh, for children. Go. There you go. It's the Frederick Douglass Marcus Frederick Douglass Garvey. Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. It's open. It's in. It's not open with the kids yet, but but it's built. Yo, I be watching him. He's doing the renovations. He had the HVAC put in. Yep. He's he just solicited for security cameras. Let's go. Like he's do, like he's doing it. He built something. It's there. So uh, you acting like you gotta convince. You don't gotta convince me, bro. People, I know it's there. People be hating on Doctor Omar, man. No, they're stupid. The they, don't they, don't <laughs> they don't have a sense of humor. They don't have a sense of like. Th it's no question that he's the funniest guy on the internet, right? <laughs> There's to no me question. because he's not trying, and I love the fact that he's become the boogeyman of biracial relationships. Yo, <laughs> if, if you pop up with a biracial relationship, Doctor Umar is watching you. That's bro. the only thing I disagree with that he says. What about biracial relationships? What, what you you should that? be able to love whoever you love. That being said, Doctor Umar, not me. You can. <laughs> you, know <what> I'm <laughs> <laughs> you can love whoever you want to love, but I'm judging. 
Are you judging? I'm only Who ju- are you to judge? A black man with a black woman. <laughs> well, I guess that makes sense. I guess that seems to have a lot of sense only behind reason, it. All, only reason I'm judging it is because, like, you know, if you're one of those people that talk so pro-black, you know what I mean? Ah. But you sleep white on either side, male or female, I'm like, yeah. okay, come on. Now. Come on now. Now, what come if on. you're one of those people who talk so pro-white? But got a black woman. But got a black woman. What do you say about that? Pro-white as fuck, black woman. I think I respect it. I never thought about it. Right? Yeah, I never thought about it. Wouldn't that be kind of fun? You mean a black man? What do you mean? A black man with a black White woman? dude. Oh, no, no. I don't know. MAGA in the streets. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Something nope. else in the nope. streets. Nope. <laughs> MAGA in the streets. N-W-A-C-E <laughs> in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> no man, I want. I like black N-W-A- men. N W A. How do you say that? Shit, by the way, huh? what's wrong? By the way, what's wrong with saying that? Saying what? Black men should be with black women. And listen, I, Asians like to keep it in their community, right? Chris? That's not true. Jewish men have been dating Asians. for I bet centuries. you. I bet you. Some people on are, your wife's side had a little problem with it, right? No, they're incredibly happy. They didn't at all. They love that. It's an accomplishment. They were? Jewish. Oh, Jewish okay, man, okay, 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 okay. Asian woman. Match made in heaven. Some Chinese people don't like the they don't like the uh, people marrying black people. Well, that is different. Different story. It's a, it's a different Chris story. It's a different story. There's a different. That's <laughs> yeah. a very different story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That that is what we would call racism. Is what you're. <laughs> that is what it, that's that's racist. Is you know it? I mean? or is it preference? Is what? it? Is it community? Yeah, well, sometimes. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if it's racist or they just want to keep it in the community. I don't know. Well, they're they're fine not keeping the community when it's a Jewish guy. Blasian is big now. Ooh, black. Chris said Blasian is big Asian now. With Asian girl, black male, Asian girl. My kids, you're either Asian, white, you're Asian. You're on the mic, Chris. Well, oh, I yeah. never heard what Chris just said. Asian. Chris said, "I thought that was a fucking GPS app." Asian. <laughs> That's not. The, oh, not the, there you go, Chris. Chris who cares about a mask? mask? Oh, on, baby. Ah. So it used to be any half Asian kid in America was known as Hopper. Hopper, right? really? Which That's is, a West Coast thing. East Coast, West, we never West said Hawaiian, that. Hawaiian, actually. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. It, that was supposed to be the official term. What yeah. does Hopper mean? I, I think it's a Hawaiian term for mixed. Okay, okay. okay. So okay. you could be half black, half Asian, half Jewish, half Asian, whatever. Yeah. According to my kids, the in New York City at least, it's Blasian. Which is black and Asian, mm-hmm. or Asian, which is white and Asian. Wow! Yeah. And they they re- oh yeah, she's Asian. Oh that other oh there are a lot of Asian kids in this class. Yeah, a lot of Asian kids in this class. But I think the ki- I mean like we always like Whitney Houston always said the children are the future, right? So I think the yeah. kids are way more progressive than the generations before them were. So they probably won't even look at it as oh it's a problem to be with a black person or it's a problem to be with a white person. It's the old it's the us older folks that's the saying keep up. it. Keep it pure. Have you heard what fuck? Dr. Umar has said about the half white, half Asian? No. no he calls them snow dragons. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, it's, 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 and that, is listen, it, Dr. Is Umar it, is the funniest yo, guy. That's going to melt that's, all the stuff. <laughs> yo, I'm telling y'all right now. That's not going nowhere. Snow dragons is snow going dragons fire. <laughs> <laughs> Snow dragons is going stick. Yeah, listen. <laughs> No dragons is crazy, bro. <laughs> Can I ask something about dragons, though? Yes. Mm-hmm. So I was in, uh, speaking of snow dragons, I was in the National Palace, which is the biggest museum in Taipei. All the... That's Taiwan? It's in Taiwan. Okay. And it's all the artifacts and ancient Chinese art that got brought over to Taiwan uh, when China fell to Mao. And everything is dragons, 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 dragons. And I'm looking at all these dragons, and I'm like, it's interesting because it's a mythical creature. But you think about Scottish, right? St. George and the dragon. Like European history, he slayed the dragon. Dra- there must have been dragons. Yeah. Duh. Because all these cultures that had no connection. The Loch Ness Monster. That's okay. a that's a dinosaur. Whoa, whoa, whoa. fake? What? Yeah, I've done a lot of research into it. I don't yeah, believe it. You think the Loch Ness was fake? That's a real. I think all this shit, y'all know how I get that. Yeah, I, I think all this shit existed at one point in time. But dragons. Must have walked the earth. What is so, but, but if they, if they just think it's about a dragon, right? right? Forget the mythical part of it. Yeah. What's so like outlandish about a dragon existing? Nothing breathes fire right now. Okay. That might be the, okay. I, 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 <laughs> I give you that. That might be the one part, right. you know what I mean? But everything else, <laughs> the flight, you know what I mean? It's just a lizard. Right. It's just a big ass reptile. You know so that's where I landed. I was like, <laughs> 
that. I never seen somebody <laughs> fold so fast. Bro. What's so unrealistic about dragons? Well, nothing really fire now. Okay. Okay. Well, if you want to lead with that, yeah, right? yeah. I wasn't going to lead with that. <laughs> I was going to name about three other things: the flight, the fact, the fact it's a reptile. You know what Reptiles I mean? Reptiles exist. Yeah. Flight exists. Yeah. Okay. Fire yeah. Two thing. out of three. Two yeah. out of three. Two yeah. out of three. So, do you think that the dragons were predominantly in Asia? That seems to be the heaviest dragon mythology, but... Is the reason they no longer exist because they've eaten them all? Could be. Could be. Could be. Probably still find some nice aged dragon wings on the wet market from years ago. <laughs> Got to pay top dollar, though, I'm sure. <laughs> well, snake know? snake wine is a big thing in Taiwan. <laughs> really? Yeah. So that's, I mean, yeah. That, yeah. I, I'm, I'm all in, bro. I'm telling y'all that right now because I, I really do feel like all of those things existed at some point in time. And you know what makes me think like that? The shit we see now. Like, think about the things we think we take for granted. Like, Can you imagine the first time somebody saw a fucking whale? Wow. Or a giraffe. Right. You know what I mean? Or yeah. an elephant. Think about the first time a human laid eyes on that shit. You'd be like, what the fuck was yeah. that? So I feel like all of that stuff probably did exist at one point. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, I mean, yeah, I guess I don't know what 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 do they say about like what is the etymology of some of these mythical beasts? I think Phoenix is another one that I feel like it pops up in different cultures. What's the phoenix? The phoenix rising? Yeah, phoenix. I don't know what is it. It's, it's just like, a bird, though. It's a right? bird, but it's consumed by fire and it comes up out of the fire and it's reborn. So that must have happened at some point because I feel like South American culture has phoenix. Yeah, I feel like European. I don't know. Phoenix and dragons, I feel. Yo, the dragon shit is the weirdest thing because, like, I don't know what it... Like, Phoenix is a bird. Okay, a bird's on fire. Okay, I can see a right. little... Whatever. But where do you get dragon from? And if it did exist, where are the bones at? Because we got bones for all these other things. Like, where does dragon... Let's say they made it up. Mm -hmm. Where did they make it up from? Is it alligator? And you're like, what if an alligator had wings? That would be the craziest animal right. ever. Right. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, is, yeah. are there alligators in, in Asia like that? Uh, probably. I don't really know. I mean, it's reptiles, though. I mean, it's, I'm sure it's some type of big ass reptile that roams there's the, the earth in Asia. The, what is it? A Gila monster or something like that? Like the closest right, but thing. There's not in Scotland. So where the fuck did the did Scottish, they get the fucking thing? Yeah, get it from? that's what I want to know. Well, dragons could fly. They probably flew over Scotland. So where the fuck? Where are the bones at, dude? We got to find dragon bones. If we got dinosaur bones in the bogs. Hey, Amen. In the what? Bogs. I, I, oh, and the bogs of Scotland. And the bogs are starting to disappear. And when they disappear, you're going to see where and that fucking Loch Ness monster. Oh, that's a fact, bro. Oh, that's a fact. Oh, no, that's real. I was, You know what's so interesting? You say that I was in my backyard. I was in the woods. And I've already cleaned up back there. Like, when I first moved in, I cleaned up back in behind the woods and shit. And, like, I went back there, you know, the other, this weekend. And I'm like, it's all types of shit that wasn't there. Like, bottles and shit. And I'm realizing... Something must have happened to where all of this stuff was still un buried under stuff and it it came up. So You're saying like the, the water level went down? Well, I, I, do, I do have a creek, but not in the areas of the creek. It's just areas of where like, the, it's something happening with the ecosystem, bro. Because there's this rock in my yard oh, that bro. used to be a whole rock. Literally a whole, like a whole round rock. Uh -huh. And now it's like cut in half. So it's just like a big strip. Like it was like, like somebody was giving somebody a haircut and they just took the clippers and went. Right through their head. That's how the rock looks. Come on, Charlamagne. Why y'all talking to, to, looking at me like I'm talking about <laughs> fucking fire breathing rocks, bro? Char Charlamagne, come on, come on, come on. Like, what do you mean? Come on, Charlamagne. I had a sinkhole in my driveway. The you know the sinkholes that are popping up. A sinkhole popped up in my driveway, bro. So you've got water underneath your property. Well, you think that's what sinkholes are? I mean, that's what happens, right? Really? I think so. Oh, I be thinking it'd be shit coming out at night. Wait, what? Shit is climbing out, bro. <laughs> That's what the this fuck guy, I be thinking? I be guy. thinking shit be climbing yeah, out of the fucking guy. ground at night, yeah, bro. And, and they don't be having time to cover that shit back up. That is funny, day, though. Like, like, all your white neighbors going, like, black person moves in. There goes the neighborhood. But, like, literally. <laughs> like, right. It just starts sinking to a fucking hole. <laughs> I live in a very diverse neighborhood. Just a, like, it's very diverse. Yeah, but the rock split in half. Right? Yo, I, I'll take a picture and send it to you. And you'll look, when you see it, you're going to be like, what the fuck? I need a before and after, though. Isn't it possible maybe you didn't see the split? No, I've been sitting on this rock for a long time. Like, well, that's maybe, my thinking yeah. rock. That's my meditation rock. I go yeah. out there and sit, you know that picture of the guy sitting on the rock? Yeah. He does like the this. Thinker. The, the thinker. thinker. Yeah. That's what I, That's what that shit's called? Yeah. That's what I go out there and do. Yeah. And it's like, I went out there this weekend. I'm like, what the fuck happened to the rock? It literally looked like somebody took some clippers 
and ran it through an afro, bro. Like it's just a straight script and it's nothing there. And, and, and actually, you can still see remnants of the rock underneath, um, underneath the ground. So it's just like, what the fuck happened? There's something going on, bro. You'll see. All the, you, you haven't seen these sinkholes that's been popping up all over the place? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's happening everywhere from the Bronx to Asia to China. You didn't see the shit they found in, in one of those Asian countries and they said it's like a whole other ecosystem yeah, under there? the whole world is underneath that's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. I'm dead serious. Okay. <laughs> Am I making this up, no, Chris? Yes. <laughs> I'm not making this up. There's some shit going on, man. We about what do you to think it is? I don't know. We about to see. It's, it's, it's some shit that we haven't seen before that's about to happen, bro. Really? Yes. Like? I don't know. I don't want to speculate. I'm just telling everybody to keep their eyes open. And those are the things we're not paying attention to. Well, the one that they say in terms of climate change and the, you know, the water levels changing and the temperatures going up is like in Siberia, there's germs and diseases that have essentially been under the permafrost for Oh yeah, I knew 10, that. 10,000. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard about the permafrost. And now they're melting and oh, yeah. all those. I think that's real. No, the permafrost pandemic been real. I've been reading about that yeah. shit. I've said that on the podcast before. What's that? I've talked about that. Like the climate change is causing the glaciers to melt and it's all of these ancient diseases right. that are underneath that shit that's yeah. about to start so being in the atmosphere. So they're going to find a bison that's been dead and preserved for 30,000 years. That's right. And it's going to... But yeah. we're sick with some disease and then all of a sudden that disease we're gonna get is going to... But wouldn't disease potentially die in the permafrost? No, I mean, the permafrost is like the bog. Like the thing with the bogs is the lack of oxygen. You know, they find these these guys from 3,000 years ago perfectly preserved. You can see all their faces. It's it's like... Wait till Captain America pop out that motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah. When Captain America pops out, y'all gonna know shit is real, <laughs> bro. See, look at this shit. Look at the headline. Giant sinkhole. What does it say? You gotta, Who, who's bringing this up? As you Giant sinkhole with a forest inside found in China. Species unknown to science could be hiding in this gaping hole. It's a whole ecosystem down there, bro. How did those trees grow? How did the grass grow if there's Under, no light? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> don't discount the fire breathing dragons or the fucking rocks that's got a part bro there's <laughs> some real shit happening the sinkhole is 630 feet meters 630 feet deep that's crazy yo <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris, what topics we got today, yo? Chris, Chris, what topics we talking about you today? Think, um, what did you think about all of the academics controversy? Yeah, can you break that down to me? What, like... Well, academics um, was on his uh, Twitch, and I think that's the thing, right? Academics is a lot like brilliant idiots. Well, the things I say about brilliant idiots, and what I mean by that is we have an audience. Yeah. And we have an audience of people who know us, who fuck with us, who listen to the whole podcast yeah. and understand yeah. anything that has been taken out of context on this podcast, they understand exactly what we were, where we were coming from. Yeah, yeah. But it's like when you're, when this gets introduced to a new audience, then that it's... conversation we're having with friends, yeah. amongst friends, yeah. gets introduced to strangers who don't know us and now they're like, well, what the fuck is this person talking about? If you go and you listen to what, and go listen to what academics was saying, academics did use the word dusty in reference to, um, an old rapper. He was talking about one rapper in particular. Who? I'm not saying. That's up for Act to tell that story. <laughs> if he ever wants to tell the story. But he was telling, he was talking about this one rapper. Yeah. And I, when I heard him say that, I understood he was talking about one rapper, right? Okay. But he asked a valid question <laughs> after that. And the valid question was, how are you a founder of hip hop or somebody who says you invented hip hop and you broke? And if you listen to his whole podcast, he's talking about, man, I just don't understand how you know, that happens. And what do you do for the founding fathers? What do they owe? He's having this whole conversation. And I'm like, yo, if you're a 31 year old guy like academics, the only hip hop era, you know, is bling bling. Mm. So everything you know about rappers has been rooted in money. Mm. Right. And so I don't know if LL heard the whole thing because what LL was addressing was literally all the points act made in the whole podcast. That's why I like how LL broke down the business and how the business was different back then. And, you 100%. Know, how, how they all, you know, not all, not him, but, you know, a lot of them were signing, like, you know, really shitty record deals because nobody even thought rap was a thing. People yeah. just wanted to get their music heard, right? So LL broke that down brilliantly. And he was breaking down how nowadays people got accountants and managers, you know what I mean? Back financial advisors. You ain't have all of that. <laughs> you winging it. You straight out the projects and yeah. you winging it. So I like that LL, you know, uh, 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 broke broke all of that down. But I don't know if 
everybody listened to everything that Ak was saying, but this is what I this is the biggest point I got when it comes to academics. I like how academics exposes a lot of hip hop's hypocrisy. For example. For example, you have a conversation with Ak and you say hip hop is not about money, you know, and somebody's contributions to the culture, you know, shouldn't be rooted in how much money they made. You're absolutely positively right. Mm. But that's what hip hop has been doing for the past 25, 30 years. Everything mm. has been about money. Like literally everything. So all of these, 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 these rules of culture that did exist in like probably the late eighties, you know, early nineties, they haven't existed in forever. Mm. So how come now all of a sudden when, Academic says it. You're mad at him, but you're not mad at all of these rappers right. who've been glorifying the money yeah. and shaming people for being broke. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's literally what hip hop has been rooted in for like the past thirty years. Yeah. Same thing with the B word. And that's the other thing. Academics. He's talking about you know uh, you know Regine Carter, salute to Regine, and he said the B word. Mm -hmm. He also called himself, and he said, "Let me not call it that." Ah, uh, you know but that's I mean? completely cut out. He, I mean, no, it's in, it's in there if you actually listen to it. And some people heard it. He was like, he was like, yo, let me, let me, let me not say that. He was like, then he bought it to women. He was like, but B words, be le be leaving these dudes when they get Rico cases, whatever, whatever. Yeah. And then it's like, yo, you can't call, <laughs> you know, you can't call women a B. You can't call women a B. And I'm like, what about the music? Really, hip hop? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, and by the way, I'm glad that we've all gotten to the point where we're growing, we're evolving. But we got to have that conversation before we get to guys like a, academics. The conversation has to be, we don't do that no more. We were wrong. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. We shouldn't be disrespecting women. Yeah. Because the truth to the matter is, y'all not worried about the disrespect of all women. You worry about respect about yeah, yeah. Little Wayne's daughter. Yeah. And that right there shows you the patriarchy. The patriarchy is, yo, you can't disrespect Little Wayne's daughter like that. You're, you're Little Wayne. Is what you're focused on. Yeah, you, you know what I'm yeah, saying? You're true. focused yeah, on the yeah, man. Yeah, 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 so it's yeah. still really not about not disrespecting the guy. Yeah. But if we want to have a conversation about not disrespecting all women, I'm all for that. Mm. But we all got to live that. You right. can't aim at the easy target and say, he shouldn't be doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and and it's got to, when, when you talk to Ak and you listen to Ak, he's confused by it. Because he's like, well, damn, all of these guys do it in their music and I hear them in interviews and they referring to women as B-words. And, <laughs> and then when like I that. do it, all of a sudden it's like, I need to have a conversation. Because it's That's a, reasonable. Because they're doing it. And, and once again, this is, this is me talking, Charlamagne. It's because it's Little Wayne's daughter. Yeah. Not, not the larger point, which it should be, is we shouldn't be disrespecting women, yeah. period. In that but way. sometimes you could be right and it's like, you're not the right messenger. True indeed. You know, like, uh, I remember Taxstone would say that shit, you know, because he was talking about the Black Lives Matter movement. He's like, as much as I support it, I can't be the voice of it. And I go, I go, what do you mean? And he goes, he goes, they'll use my life and my history That's right. as a way to discredit the movement. That's right. So I just got to support it. That's right. But I can't be the guy That's for right. it or one That's of right. the people for it. And I was like, oh, that's a really savvy point. That's right. Because we see people do that all the time with politicians, with that's musicians, right. with everything. It's like once there's something that you could discredit, then it discredit right. everything they're standing for. And I think maybe that's something that people who have used those words or continue to use those words got to understand. You know what I mean? I, I know you see a lot of rappers talking about like, uh, you know, uh, rappers being under attack or whatever like that. You know, they're treating us like we're violent. And it's like, mm -hmm. well, in your music, you're saying you're violent. <laughs> you can't you can't put out all the albums about yeah. how violent and dangerous you are and then be like, why do the police think we're violent and dangerous? It's that is like, true. That you is true. said you are. That is true. And, I, and I, you know, even when this first happened, when the situation first happened, I said on Breakfast Club, I was like, People are going to have so much disdain for academics that we're not going to have the larger conversation. Mm. And the larger conversation should be how do we, you know, make sure our founding fathers of hip hop are good. Well, that's the other thing about being a founding father is like the founding fathers are always broke. It's like the first. First over the wall. That's yeah, right. it's like first, yeah, first over the wall gets shot. But it's like, like, think about it. Like you look at basketball, like Bill Russell. I'm not saying Bill Russell's broke, but like Bill Russell didn't make the money that fucking LeBron is making now. But they have a union and those guys. That's that right. Way. Still, he never, right. he didn't touch the real money. Like sure, even like sure. football players, like there's money now that's happening in these sports that the early guys that were like famous, famous yeah. to us never touch. Charles to, Barkley ain't make no money that these guys are making. But to LL's point, the business is different. 
So it's a bigger business now. It's a multi-billion dollar business. That's now. It wasn't totally a multi-billion true. dollar business when, you know, and he's those one of the guys who helped it. create that. I mean, absolutely. He one of the earliest in movies and TV. And absolutely. And also just massive commercial success. And, yeah. Absolutely. So <laughs> that's my whole thing. I just like the, I love the hip hop hypocrisy that, that, that comes with these situations. Cause yo, a few days later, the good brother 50 Cent is on Instagram, <laughs> you know, Wait, with his son. Because, he, you know, I guess his baby mom was with, 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 with Diddy or whatever. And he's like, son, what I told you, these bitches be crazy. It's like, I ain't see the bitch police jump out on 50. Hey. There wasn't, wasn't no alarms being rang uh, for fifth, you know? And, 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 and the, the crazy thing about that is the conversation turns to, well, that's because 50 built like that. You know, he fit, 50 really active in these streets. I'm like, well, what do I got to do anything? I thought the conversation was about whether something's right or wrong. That's it. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, nothing yeah, more, yeah. nothing less. But it's not a, it's, to, 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 to that point about the messenger, it's just always about the messenger. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's never really about the message. And that's why, like, sometimes, man, in, in, in any culture, whatever rules you have, nobody sticks to. Because nobody knows what the fucking rules are because the rules always yeah. change from person to person. You and, know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, they all change from person to person and and, and, and who it's directed to. Uh, you know, you know, uh, you, you hear B-word over here, okay, whatever. Oh, you hear B-word over here, okay. But when it's directed to, oh, you can't call this person. Bitch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or you hear somebody call somebody the B-word and it's like, oh, you, <laughs> you don't say nothing about it, but, yeah. but academics, you can't call women the yeah. B-word. It's like, it's like, come on, man. Yeah, it's almost like that was like, the excuse to attack. There's almost maybe like there's right. a bunch of people who are ready to attack right. and then you gave them That's right. the tiniest thing That's right. where they could jump on it. And when you listen to his audience, yeah. who are probably all a bunch of people his age, yeah. they're confused. Yeah. And they think we look stupid as shit. Even saying what we're saying? Because they're like, you ain't, your house ain't clean. How yeah. you gonna tell him his house dirty? You know well, what I mean? That's the trickiest thing about, I think the trickiest thing about hip hop, man. It's like, yeah, it's, it's a very tricky thing about hip hop where We're it is. Guilty. Say again? We're all guilty. We're all guilty. Yeah, it's like everybody, guilty. everybody's guilty, at least of something. It's actually the tricky thing about just being like a human in the first world. Like, in American culture. Yeah. American pop culture. All these people are tweeting about, you know, how about injustice on a phone that's made by slaves, bro. It's right. like, <laughs> it's crazy. Like, it, it's a crazy thing, <laughs> no, right? It is, like, it is, it is. so, so it just is. being a it human is. in the first world. In this time, you are directly part of a supply chain that leads to something awful happening. Now, that doesn't mean that you're responsible for it because it's impossible to completely unplug. What are we going to go do? Live in the forest, not talk to anybody? That's right. Same thing. So, yeah. so we're allowed, maybe if we just acknowledge our own hypocrisy and then just try to do our best within the system that we live in. I think a lot of people, they look at music and it's just like, well, you don't got to call women this in music. You don't got to do this. But at the same time, I'm here on the podcast bitch here bitch there all that kind yeah, of shit yeah 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 yeah. by the way that too though like when, when Tupac back in the day God bless the dead Tupac made that statement he was like there's a difference between bitches there's a difference between queens you know real women he yeah. had a whole song called I wonder why they call you bitch in reference to C. Dolores Tucker go listen to that record it's on all eyes on me but most importantly go listen to what Tupac says at the end of the record Tupac says it's just business he says that mm. he literally says no, don't take nothing offense. Don't take offense to it. It's not personal. It's just business. What does that mean? I think that a lot of us are tongue in cheek and use these words oh, in this just colorful song, language because we know that's what attracts people. I've never, I've never really like subscribed to the B word. Really? No, nah, no. Nah, especially in regards to women, I call you. I, I'll say it to a dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, but like re- for women, nah, I'm like that's it's, it's always been harsh. I don't, I, I would never, language is an interesting thing, especially yeah, slang. Yeah. Why are we calling people something we got? What do you mean? Dickhead? I look at my dickhead every day. What's yeah, wrong I, with a dickhead? I don't think there's anything. That's why it's so hard to insult men because like just calling us the body parts. The best one was in coming to America. Which was? When Arsenio Hall said, you freeze, you diseased rhinoceros, pizzle. That's fire. That made sense. Yeah. But that's you know long I mean? as hell. In I don't know argument. why the rhinoceros in particular, but just the disease part. Yeah. Like just to say you dickhead, like. Yeah. You got one. Yeah. Pussy. Yeah. yeah. I love pussy. Yeah. Like why, like, why would you call somebody something you like is an insult? Like, yeah. None of it makes sense. Yeah, it's got it like... Ass it's... wipe? You don't wipe your ass? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, we make up these... Yeah. We... Cock. Cock. Cock is good. Cock. 
What is cuck? Like cuckold? Like I thought cuck mean you like. Not, yeah, that is interesting. That means you like to watch other people fuck your woman, right? Yeah, that's. Ooh, that that's is that, like that, yeah, that yeah, hits yeah. deep, bro. Unless you actually like cucking, and then if you don't like cucking, yeah, that's an insult. But if you actually like cucking, nobody can insult you because no. what are they supposed to say? Like you fuck your wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you wife fucker. <laughs> you know, like yeah, motherfuckers you, a good one. Motherfucker, nah, because if your if your wife got kids, you a motherfucker. Oh yeah, yeah. So you'd have to say your motherfucker. You are a motherfucker, bro. No, no, like your motherfucker. My oh no, better. No, that's no, my no, dad. The Jama- oh, the Jamaicans got it the best. Yeah, yeah. Go your fuck mo- your mother. Your, that's Ooh. crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> Going back inside. <laughs> rewind. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, that's crazy, dude. No, that's that's that's, that's the next level. Go fuck your mother is yeah, wild. Your mother's cunt. Your mother's cunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does yeah. that mean? Your mother's pussy, bro. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah what yeah, about yeah. his blood clot? Literally just a blood clot. I don't even know what that clot. means. Blood clot. I mean, blood clot is terrible. You yeah, know, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, saying that's why I, mean, I don't know what. Well, I guess I didn't think blood clot was bad. I thought it, I thought blood clot is like fuck. Blood clot. I don't why know what that? blood clot means. Yeah, why blood clot? Would blood clots kill you? It's like aneurysm. Does it mean stop? They got a thing about blood though. Like right. if a woman's on her period, she can't touch the food or nothing. Like. Does it mean stop? The blood clot. Does it mean stop? Because it's like everything stopped up. You know what I mean? Does it mean stop? I thought it's just used as like fuck. Really? Like you stub your toes, like the blood the clot. The blood clot. The blood clot streets. Yeah, language is an interesting thing, man, that I don't think we've quite mastered yet. Look, what does it mean? Look, what is, uh, the meaning of the word a blood clot. A colloquial Jamaican saying to call someone a blood clot is likening them to a woman's menstrual fluid. Uh, oh, I told shit. you, bro. I, Holy it's shit. It's the blood cloth. Holy like, shit. The cl- it's not blood clot. It's <laughs> blood cloth. Holy that they, shit. Yo, they don't, the periods, bro, they are afraid of them periods, man. Yo. If you get an attack... By a gang of Jamaicans, bro. Pull a tampon out. Oh, you're right. Blood cloth. And oh, start shit. fucking swinging that shit like Keep this. Right when Jamaicans say bro. cloth, it comes out as clot. The blood cloth. blood cloth is a feminine hygiene uh, product. Oh, that's fire. You a tampon? Son. So in essence, when the word is used in anger towards someone, you're basically calling, calling them, them a, a tampon. tampon. Your tampon. Fire. Yo, tampon fire. is sick. Fire. Fuck fire. up, tampon. Are you fucking tampon? Yo, fuck what? up, tampon. Shut up, tampon hall. Yeah, look at this maxi pad <laughs> over here. <laughs> yo, son. Maxi pad Yo, the, tampon yeah, up, is yo. fire. Who are you, blood yo? Clot. So the then blood then clot. The blood clot. Bumble clot. Bumble. The bumble clot. What? Bumble clot. Isn't that it? one? Yeah, yeah, what's that bumba, there bumba go, clot? Yeah, yeah. Bumba, oh, that's like a doo-doo that, that's one. That's the animal, yeah, that gotta be the animal. The bumba clot? Bumba clot is Jamaican slang equivalent to douchebag or motherfucker. It's obviously often used as an expression. to express disgust and dismay. It's also spelled bumba clot or bumba clot among other spellings. It's an insulting vulgarity that literally refers to either menstrual pads or toilet paper. Oh, it's Damn. the same thing. The bumba clot and the blood clot. The Those are fire. Clot. The bumba Those, clot. Jamaicans, y'all got it. Those are fire insults because d- <laughs> women do not like their periods. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> like, Yo, like, so why, like, you know they, but why don't they understand when we don't like them then? The only time they like them is when they don't want to be, when they think they're pregnant and then, and then they come, they're not. That's it's it. Re- that's the only time they're happy to see it. Other when, than that, they hate that shit. Women's reward for not being pregnant is feeling like shit for four days. Seven. Damn, bro. <laughs> Damn. Damn, girl. <laughs> house with a lot of women, you know. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, yeah. Man. That's my the life. The blood clot. Uh, what else we got? Um, scroll back up. Oh, Rihanna's doing the Super Bowl halftime Let's show. Let's go. Which means that she probably will have an album coming out oh, as think? well. Either that or some new Fenty Beauty products. Oh, you think? You know what I mean? I like it, man. I think it's dope. Last year we got Dr. Dre and Snoop and 50, Eminem, Kendrick. Yeah. You know, this year we got Rihanna and, um, I'm hearing that she wants to bring out a lot of different people with her. She, and she has the rep, she has the songs to do it. Oh like. my God. She can bring out T.I. for Live Your Life. She could bring out Drake for that, uh, oh, na na, what's oh, my name? Uh, oh. She could bring out Eminem for the monster if Eminem wants to come back two years in a row. Mm-hmm. She could run this town with Jay and <laughs> fucking Kanye. Like, she got smashes. Like, and those are like all big records, number one records. Like, I think she's the perfect type of performer, not performer, uh, artist to have at the Super Bowl. Yeah. Because she is a song that touches almost every genre. She got the house music song that she yeah. did with, uh, what's this good guy's name? David Guetta? David Guetta, right? Or was or it Calvin? Oh, no, uh, Calvin Harris. Calvin we Harris. We found love in a hopeless place. Slap. She got R&B, she got rap, and yep. then she even has like a like a soft rock song with Paul McCartney and then, what was the one we were talking about? I don't want to see that shit. 
all I'm saying is she has something yeah, for yeah, everybody yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this is interesting, too, because, you know, she told Vogue in 2019 when they asked her about performing at the Super Bowl. She said, I couldn't dare do that. For what? Who gains from that? Not my people. I just couldn't be a sellout. I couldn't be an enabler. There's things within that organization that, that I do not agree with at all. And I was not about to go and be of service to them in any way. Now, mind you, 2019, you know, the Rock Nation partnership was still in play. So I wonder what's, you know, changed over the last We're few years. We're all hypocrites, bro. Well, no. She, We're all Here's the hypocrites. thing. She said she turned down the Super Bowl gig in solidarity with activists and former San Francisco 49er quarterback Colin Kaepernick. The reason that is always going to be difficult to do is because Colin would like to play in a Super Bowl right now. Well. Yes, he would. So why are you going to boycott the Super Bowl <sighs> when he actually wants to be in it? That's what I'm saying. He wants to be in the league. Like, that's always difficult. It's always difficult to stay your standing in solidarity with Colin, because Colin wants to be in the league, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, it's, you know, I, I would like, I can't wait until that question is answered because I'm sure it will be. I'm sure when she does press around the Super Bowl, somebody will ask her about that. And I just, I just want to know what her answer is now. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm glad. I, everybody, I reserve the right to change my mind all the time, you know? Well, what do you think her answer is going to be? Because it's not the money. They don't even pay you to do that shit. Really? Yeah. I don't think you get paid, to, think the you get paid to do the Super Bowl. I think um, what you do is you get paid mm. to like be at the Pepsi party or some shit. I, it's just the look. It's so big. It's big. I, I mean, I would think that her answer would be that she got a project coming out. I, I, I like. I don't that even idea. think it's that. I, or maybe, but I think it's more so. Yo, the solidarity with Jay Z and Rock Nation. Ah, uh, Jay Z's my people. Like, they have my back. Yeah, they signed me. They've been my partners forever. You know what I mean? I'm. I'm. I'm I am who I am because of. This you know, that, that partnership, and I like the work that they are, they have been doing they with gonna the NFL. They're going to bring that quote up a lot. Yeah, oh, they absolutely. They're going to bring that quote up a lot. But uh, honestly, that quote, I'm glad she had that stance in 2019, but three years later, it's just kind of weird to have that stance to say you're in solidarity with Cap because Cap still wants to be in the league. Yeah, what's the deal with that? I don't know. It's just, did you just say we're all hypocrites? It's like, yeah. it's all <laughs> hi hypocrisy. It's just like that, nothing, it doesn't even make any sense. Hasn't Bruh. that ship sailed though? I mean, he had a tryout, that, uh, you know, he had a tryout with the Raiders earlier this year. Nobody talks about that. I don't know what happened in that tryout. I saw Warren Sapp do an interview with Vlad TV and he was just saying how terrible the tryout was. You know what I mean? Look. I don't I mean, do you see Kaepernick coming back? I mean, he no. he tried out no. with the Raiders recently, but I heard the tryout wasn't all that great. I heard it was a disaster. I heard it was one of the worst workouts ever. I'm wondering how the hell this happened and the tape didn't get out, right? I mean, somebody wasn't over the, bout, over the fence or nothing? Come on, man. We, we live in a world right now where you put a drone up. Hey, it ain't like they can stop you. They ain't gonna stop the workout. Somebody there's a drone up here. We don't know who this is. I mean, what? Come on, let's 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 run this. They don't even send them up the the, the ladder anymore. You know, we just go out to practice. <laughs> send the guy up the thing. He's shooting practice off. <laughs> Unbelievable. He was never incredible at being a quarterback. He was good. he was good. He was really good. No, nah, he was really good. He was a Pro Bowler. Pro Bowler led his team to the Super Bowl. He was he was good. No, I don't think he was ever considered an incredible quarterback. I think he's I, I, an incredible I, he's, he's an good. incredible talent that. Okay, I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? But the actual skill of being a quarterback, what often happens in the league is that by the second or third year, teams start to figure out how to play or or plan for a specific quarterback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Because you can do that. You can plan to someone's strengths. Like, if you know that a certain quarterback isn't going to run at all, then, and you know they're only going to pass, you could drop people back into pass coverage. Yeah. Like, there's certain things. And if you know they are going to run, then you can focus on that. Like, there's specific things. They sometimes you can stop it, sometimes you can't. And, and you have a perfect that example of Lamar like, Jackson. I was just about to say, oh my god! So like the Lamar Jackson thing is, everybody's going, oh okay, second season they're going to figure him out. Nope, Joe third Burrow, season they're going to figure Burrow, him out. Figured out. Joe looks, and also his <laughs> line is doo doo. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. there's certain things, and I think that what happened was they started to figure out him, and his game didn't evolve past that, or maybe he didn't have enough time for his game to evolve past that, or maybe the people who's just playing with. But it seems like when he's had these tryouts, he wasn't impressive enough to deal with. Well, how long the, has it been? What five years? No, been, longest. I mean, there's like, no precedent. Like for that, eight, right? Nobody's seven to eight. Nobody's out been out the league for seven years. Nah, like, He's working out because he needs something to do. Bro. What's right. the last time? 2015, 2016, Alex. I don't know if there's a precedent in any sport for being gone that five long. years and then five coming years back. Is a long time. How long was Ali in, at war for? Or not in prison? Two, three tops. Like, no, nah, Ali never went to prison. I, I think they locked him up. And no, then no, he no. He, he, they, they, he couldn't box for like three and a half years. 2017 is so like five years. Mike Tyson went to prison. Three I know years. Tyson went to prison for three. Tyson went to prison for three years. 
Um, but yeah, they took away his license. Yeah, they took away his license. Yeah, Ali couldn't box for what three and a half years, something, something like, like that. that. Right. I don't know. It's crazy. You know, I just you know I, I wish everybody the best, but I I, I I I always wonder what happened with that. I remember they announced that he was having a trial with the Raiders. Then you didn't hear nothing else from it. Yeah, you know. So who knows? Um, let's pay some bills. Alex Media, <laughs> owner of WTF Media, with Wheezy the Fuck Media. Yeah, Wheezy the Fuck, salute the Wheezy. Guys, today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace, mm-hmm. okay? Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything, your products, content you create, and even your time, okay? I'm telling you, Squarespace makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. If you have a business, you need to make sure that you have a place on the internet for it. It is an absolute no-brainer. Okay, if you have a business, you need to make sure that you have a place on the internet for it. Okay, they got absolutely everything that you need. Okay, they have built in analytics to measure the impact of every send. Okay, they can, uh, you can use those anal- analytics and insights to grow your business. You can learn where your site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are most effective. You can improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords or most popular products and content. So, right now, if you head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot. You can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot with the offer code idiot for 10% off your first purchase. Let's get back to the show. That's yes, all we got right sir. now. Um, church announcement show, T. Yo, man, check out uh, the Mr. Beast episode of Flagrant, man. I, 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 we had him on. I mean, he's just the best guy at YouTube ever. It was absolutely amazing. And uh, How did he build his following? Like, what was he talking about that got him all those subscribers? He wasn't talking. He was just creating videos. Like, he just found a way to make the viral video. Every single week, viral video, viral video, what, viral though? video. It could be just random games. Like, initially, he was starting out, he was doing, like, a gaming channel. And then he just started to create these, like, viral stunts. He recreated the Squid Game thing. Before that, he'll do, he'll buy an island and then say the last person of his friends to leave it gets to keep it. Like, he'll just do every single wild stunt you could wow. imagine. And then he built this amazing fucking audience and now he's getting into consumer goods but he's like an absolutely brilliant creator and like a brilliant businessman so like to have him like wow. break down everything from youtube thumbnails to like analytics to retention strategies and just talk about like his come up it was crazy it's like four hours long so i'm flagrant go check that out damn also i was in a vlog with casey neistat that was really cool we went surfing together and i really admire casey he's like one of the ogs of youtube and like really the reason why people vlog is because of him and like to hang out with him and like to see an incredibly successful person and like meet him and be just as impressed in person is really gratifying because you're like, oh, this success that you have is completely deserved. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah That's yeah. the best feeling. Like, absolutely. So that was awesome. So you could check that out on his uh, YouTube. Um, what you got, bro? What I got? What I got? A uh, hell of a week. Uh, yeah, who's on this week? This week is uh, Jason Lee from Hollywood Unlocked. Yep. Uh, Yamanika Saunders. Uh, and I forgot who else. Don't give me the line. Don't give me the line. <laughs> and somebody's not confirmed yet, but uh, yeah. Um, but watch Thursday night, eleven thirty, Comedy Central. Um, make sure you um scream us on Paramount Plus too. Yes, that's very important. The DVR and and, the, and they got YouTube clips of it. Of they the got show. YouTube clips up. You know what I mean? Which is you know the most fulfilling mm-hmm. thing always because it's just like when you see people organically sharing content from the show. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like that's. That's really all you can ask for in 2022, 100%. 2023, because, like, the internet is where it's at. Like, you just want people to see the show. That's 100%. it. Like, you want people to say, oh, yeah, I'll be watching Hell of a Week. And, like, you know, for me, man, it's just all about the work more so than anything. When people tell me that they like the show, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? That's yeah. that's 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 very fulfilling. So every Thursday night, 1130 on Comedy Central. And uh, make sure you keep RSVPing to come to the Mental Wealth Expo. Yes. My second annual Mental Wealth Expo is October the 8th. Uh, it's going to be at the Marriott Marquis in Times Square. Man, we got some amazing people. You know, I bring together some of the best mental health professionals on the planet. Dr. Rita Walker, Dr. Alfie Breland Noble, um, Dr. Spirit. Um, uh, I got Wallow and my man Shaka Sinkor. They're doing a, a, a talk together about the effects of the prison system on your mental health. I got a great panel. It's a, it's a hip hop and mental health panel with, you know, Rhapsody, who's one of my favorite, favorite lyricists, uh, Joey Badass. And G Herbo, because, you know, all of them are very outspoken about 
you know, um, their, 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 their mental health struggles. That'll mm-hmm. be moderated by Dr. Alfie Breland Noble. And I got uh, Pastor Torrey Roberts and Sarah Jakes Roberts during the keynote, during, doing the keynote speech. So it's a free event. All you got to do is go to Mental Wealth Expo dot com and register just like last year it was free it's free this year gonna have food for y'all because it's gonna be from 11 to 4 so just pull up man a day of mental health education and healing Debbie Brown my good sister Debbie Brown Debbie pulled up on me this weekend because she's doing a one a, a, a spiritual retreat here in New York that she's leading shout out to Debbie and that was such a you know you know when you get those surprise visits from friends yes yeah, you know what I mean and she didn't realize that like on Saturday morning like I really really needed that like i really needed to see her so we just sat around why what were you going through oh nothing crazy it's just like you know like i woke up i was really i was frustrated about the tv show right because of how they did ray j yeah and i gotta i gotta take that i gotta i'm the one that gets it's your show yeah i take the blows for that so you know when i saw ray j you know come up saturday morning and he was upset i was upset for him because i'm like that's my guy i don't want to and hurt Ray J, you know what I'm saying? Grateful. He's he's played a huge part in huge your career. part, whether he meant to or not. You know, he, he what has I'm <laughs> whether it was right. intentional or not. That's he right. Has. Yeah. And I've been knowing Ray for a long time. I met Ray, man. I met Ray when I was doing radio in Columbia, South Carolina. I met Ray J. This was like 2003, 2004. I think One Wish might have been out. Whatever single was out there at the time. I took him to I took him to buy weed. Like, that's how long I known yeah. Ray. So me and Ray have always had a you know a good relationship. So I you know I don't like. To, put people in that position. You know what yeah. I mean? So I, I was a little upset about that. And, you know, you don't really know who to bark at. So, you know, <laughs> you end up barking yeah. at your team. You yeah. know what I mean? Because you feel like they should, you know, protect you from stuff like that. But it's really nobody's fault. It's the, that's the network. That was a network decision. You got to do what you got to do. So I was feeling away and then she just, you know, pulled up and we just literally, me, her and my wife and her assistant just sat in the backyard all day doing plant-based drugs, plant-based medicine, and nice. drinking tequila. So it was a good wow. day. Chris, you got any church announcements? Uh, summer of 85. Hey. Check it out. Yeah. Okay, Chris. That's I, was, I like the really enthusiasm one, of that. All right, well, uh, I'll try it again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was Keep talking. Keep these in, though. This is, <laughs> let's see if there's any difference. Summer of 85 is an Audible original uh, produced by SBH, well, produced by Chris Moreau, distributed by SBH Productions and Audible. It tells the story of what, Chris? Uh, Summer of 85, the move bombing in Philadelphia and the Live Aid concert. And I was going to say I was uh, stalking through the Brilliant Idiots Reddit uh, page the other day and I saw people talking about it and people had very nice things to say. So hey, that made, it's that made me feel good. That made it's me phenomenal. Feel good. It's, it's, it's actually phenomenal. And it's just like it, it, for anybody that believes in conspiracy theories, hmm. that's a that's a, a great one that I can't believe people have never put together. Yeah, the I don't bombing know if it's a conspiracy. Well, the conspiracy is the bombing of. I mean, that's not a conspiracy. They did get bombed for the sure. Move organization, but the fact that their their last names were all Africa, right? And then the Live Aid concert happened that summer, which was a benefit concert for Africa. Africa yeah. The conspiracy theory is: Did they do that benefit concert to make you forget about? This act of domestic terrorism that happened. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think it's closer to what Andrew was talking about, which is we're all just a bunch of fucking hypocrites in this all country. Just a bunch you of know, like, hypocrites. hey, we're going to throw a big fucking concert and act like we care about Africa, even though the evidence shows out it's right here. Yeah. It's literally at your doorstep. But that's yeah. the American way, right? Should we just say fuck consistency at this point? Am I the only person that tries to be consistent? Brother, I'm consistently a hypocrite. Right. We all, I mean, my man, just roll with it. Just it's so much. But better. you acknowledge it. That's what I'm saying. Let's acknowledge who we are. We're human. Yo, God knew it. God, God did. knew it. <laughs> like, How the fuck you made that turn to cat? No, but like, God knew it. No, That's like be Jesus, the remix. Jesus knew that we were gonna go pretend to be perfect, right? Mm. And he's like. Was it Jesus or God? I don't know. I'm not super religious. Well, but some like, say they're one and the same, which is also hypocrisy. There we go. They, they don't worship any God but God. Wow. <laughs> well, I guess my point is, he's like, yo, you're already a sinner. Like you're born a sinner. So stop trying to act like you're perfect. Just cough up and be, say you're a hypocrite and then it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because everybody is on yeah. some level. You're going to find some of it. And then once we all acknowledge that we're a little bit of hypocrites, it's harder to use your one hypocritical thing to discredit from everything else that you're doing. Yeah. Because a lot of times you'll be like, yo, we got to look after the climate. And then someone goes, yeah, well, you use toilet paper, motherfucker. Yeah. Why don't you wipe with your hands? That's that's real. Like, and it's like, well, yes, I would like my ass to be clean, yeah. but maybe there's other things we could do to look out for the environment while yeah. still using toilet paper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Immigration. Yeah. We were talking about immigration the other day. I'm a big hypocrite on immigration. Why? Yeah. Explain. 
both of sides of my family are very recent immigrants to the United States. But, mm-hmm. you know, I'm like, hey, all right, enough's enough. Let's but they're this. legal migrants, though, right? Kind of, maybe. Oh, shit, Chris. I don't know. <laughs> oh, shit. Were Irish immigrants in yeah. 1912 legal? I mean, get I on that know. boat. He you got on the is? boat. Shit was bad. He got on the boat. He came here. My grandmother came here. Jewish side of the family, yeah, same yeah. thing. Within the last hundred years, everybody came over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, hey, you know, maybe that's hypocritical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. like, hey, it was good for us. But what they say, you know, you pull the gate down behind you. Afterwards. Exactly. I don't think hypocrisy. I think when you acknowledge hypocrisy and you're aware of the fact you've changed your mind or your, or your stance has changed, I don't think that's hypocrisy. Hypocrisy to me is when, like, you act like you're not aware that you're being a hypocrite. Like no, you said I, one thing here, yeah. but then you do one thing over there and it's like, you just act like those two things that's, never happened. That's more annoying. I think <laughs> a hypocrisy in general is just doing one thing and then doing the exact opposite somewhere else. And it's like... But what if you acknowledge though? What if you're yeah, like... You're still a hypocrite. You just acknowledge it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, but, but you're more tolerable. Like when somebody does something you know they're doing it for the money and then they act like they, you think they're going to act like they're not and they're yeah. like, no, nah, I'm just doing this to get money. Yeah, yeah, Then yeah, all yeah. of a sudden you're like, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. It's comforting, yeah. right? That's like Popovich yeah. the other day. They asked him, why'd you come back? And he's like, the salary. <laughs> the salary. And you're like, oh, okay, My paycheck. You. It's right, really yeah. nice. As long as you're aware of the hypocrisy, I don't have a problem with it. Because we're all, it's a constant, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, we're all works in progress, right? We're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to change our minds. We we all think we feel a way about something until we actually got to experience it. Exactly. That's the other problem. There's so many motherfuckers talking about shit you've never experienced. You don't know what you're going to actually do until you're in the situation. That's why I like when they sent the, the, the immigrants up to Martha's Vineyard or whatever. It. And then Martha's Vineyard, I think, accepted them and like was created like the sanctuary. They're a sanctuary state. It's a sanctuary state, state Massachusetts. But you would think that you would think that like sending them to this really exclusive neighborhood, the yeah. people in that area would be like, get them the fuck out of here. They'd be like these, uh, what are they called? Limousine liberals or champagne liberals in L.A. who are What's just called? like not in my backyard. NIMBY. It, exactly. Yeah, right. not, so it's, you know, the, the people in L.A. who are like, oh, my God, how dare you like uh, build a wall? But then they live in a gated community or whatever. Like, there's yeah. a lot of hypocrisy right there. But apparently they accepted them. They're looking out for them. They're trying to. For a bring little them bit. In. They were there for, for like little. 24 hours. Yeah. Exactly. And, was- then, and then when that hypocrisy. And then so that's nice because now I'm going, oh, you're not a hypocrite. And then in a month when they kick him the fuck out, then I'm going to go, you son of a bitch. Shut the fuck up. Don't ever say anything about sanctuary. But city. they kind of are hypocrites. And that's why, you know, they 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 had me in the headlines because I said I thought, you know, what Ron DeSantis and, you know, Governor Abbott and those guys are doing was, was genius. You know yeah, it mean? is. Now, now, you, you, do you want to call is is it inhumane? Yes, but the whole border crisis is inhumane. No, it's not inhumane. I don't. Th- I didn't think it was because when you. Well, no, no, no. This, this what they say is this. What they, I'm gonna tell you what they say is inhumane about it. That you're sending a group of people off and they don't know where they're going, and and they're and you're getting them on these buses and planes under false pretenses. For me, I'm oh, like, oh wait, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's that's there's, there's, yeah, there's, yeah, a, there's yeah, another yeah. part of it too. Okay, before they put them on the buses and planes. They had them register with ICE offices like in Wisconsin or Oregon or someplace, and they have to check in within 30 days. Now, once you send these people to Martha's Vineyard, there's no way they could check. They're not checking in anywhere, and then they have to get deported. So I think that was... All right. But having yeah, go, said go. that, I think for this particular group of people, it'll probably work out well, because I don't know this for a fact. I, I suspect that between charity groups and individual families, people, you know, like if someone came to me and was like, Hey, can you give us money for this specific Venezuelan guy who was yeah. trapped in? I They're going to become like a virtue, there's like cause celeb, it's a virtue or, signal yeah, 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 opportunity yeah. for the so people. So for there. them, I think it's cool. But for the next ones, it's other. I didn't realize that they were leading them under false pretense. But I, it's still an evil genius move. No, so they don't have to. They could be like, listen, we got you. You you snuck in illegally. Right. We got you. You don't get to sneak in and live where you want. If you sneak in and we get you, we either send you back. Or we send you to a to, sanctuary state, to a where, sanctuary city. Literally, like if you call yourself a sanctuary state or city, you are willing to That's accept. Right. That's right. And then what's going to happen right. once this happens? But I think we should be honest with with the people that you catch, like 100 percent. You can't mislead them. Yeah. But if there are these states that want to be the sanctuaries, especially the ones that are so far from the fucking border, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. And they're going to virtue signal about how amazing they are and how welcome they are for immigrants. And then with the, the border states go. Well, let's see if they really live that fucking life. That's all it is. Listen, you got the vice president. How can you be mad at that if you're honest with the people? Yes, you got the vice president on Meet the Press. They asked her about the border crisis. She said the border was secure. 
She knows that's not true. Yeah. We had over 2 million migrants come through this year. Mm -hmm. 2 million migrants have crossed the southern border crazy. this year. Record number. Never happened in the history of America, wow. right? Wow. So she said that. So Governor DeSantis, <laughs> Governor Abbott, they're like, oh, word. Put them on the bus. Put them on the plane. Dump them right in their front yard. Mm -hmm. Now you got to call a bluff. Now, they, now they're calling Democrats bluff because you have these Democrats who advocate for open borders. They advocate for sanctuary cities, but they never got to come face to face with the consequences of the things that they're advocating for. I mean, I don't look, think so. We're in New York City. We're far from the border. I'm pretty sure a lot of people wind up in New York. It's a sanctuary city. city. Right. It's also a, sanctuary sanctuary city. a place with easy access to jobs for illegal right. immigrants. People are coming here. They, I think they sent two buses people here, People are too. coming to Boston. They might not be coming to Martha's Vineyard because there's no housing that anybody yeah. can afford in Martha's Vineyard. I, it, what's the answer? I just think it, I, I think it brings awareness to a situation that we probably wouldn't be paying attention to. This is what happens. That's a fair. A That's lot, what I think. That's fair. You know how it's like easy for white people in the suburbs to ignore what's happening to black people in the inner city because they don't touch them at all. Right. While at the same time, they're like equality. And we yes. have to look at this is this is the version of that yes. for illegal immigration. We don't know. I personally I don't live on the border, so I don't know what how illegal immigration affects the border, that's those right. communities. I don't know what it does to and the economy. And that's what they're trying to show you. That's why they're like, I'm going I'm to put I, this border crisis on your front lawn. Yeah. So now you know how I, we I feel. went to a very liberal university that taught me that uh, that uh, people create their own economy so that new people coming in is just going to add more money to the economy. Maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. I don't know because I don't live on the border. Right. But if the people on the border are saying that it's affecting them in negatively or in a negative way, and these people in New York and these people in Northern California are going, oh, be quiet over there. Just be more accepting, right. be more whatever. That's right. And then they want to bring that quote unquote problem to their front door and see how they react to it. Maybe they'll have more empathy for what's going on at the border. And then maybe they'll go, you know what? We've experienced it now. We see why this is frustrating for you guys. Maybe what we should do is try to find a way to shore up the border because right. now we felt the problem. It's not that crazy. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm President it's Biden. It's not racist. I don't think it's racist. Listen, if I'm President Biden, our President Harris, I just called a bluff back. I said, you know what? Y'all are right. The U.S. immigration policy is trash. Border security is trash. Can we all come together and try to fix it? Can we create some type of bipartisan legislation to fix this border? Mm -hmm. You know they don't want to do that. <laughs> Who, you know who's they? Who's the they? GOP. I don't right. think, no, no, know? the GOP. I, I, no, I don't they think love they will. love having the boogeyman. That's right. Of, It'll ooh, piss their base off. You know, Interesting. The right. moment that they try to come together to say, you know what, we are going to work this about it pisses their base off. Call the bluff back. Interesting. And, but, but, but guess what? Guess what you're doing now? What? Now you're now you're playing political tricks right. with people. And now you've pissed off your base. There you go. Yeah. On the far left. Oh, there you go. It's hypocrisy. I mean, look, for every Republican in Arizona that's saying we're we're close to the border, there's influence. I don't know this for a fact. I'm assuming a lot of them who have to have manicured, watered lawns every week. <laughs> who's doing that? Yeah. yeah you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, Everybody's. Yeah has a position, but is still reaping the benefits of it when it's convenient. You know, we're all... It's like everybody wants illegal labor up to a point. Right. It's like, I want just enough where my life is comfy. They're like, two million is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's too many people now. When it, when it was a couple thousand, 10,000, oh, we can handle that. Two yeah. million? That's, that's crazy. a lot that, of million. That, I, know, I know that's where their mind is. Yeah. And 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 we, and we it's just disingenuous to be the vice president and be on TV saying that the board is secure and you know it's not. So, yeah. so maybe some of those Republican governors are like, well, maybe she don't know. <laughs> Let's show her. Also, two million. There's no way to calculate the amount of people who come here illegally. Well, a lot of people uh, are also. Um, but you they, feel they, me like this is like it's like calculating how many like well theft is. Well, a they, different they, they calculate the arrest. But that's just that many. It, yeah, 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 yeah. So a lot of people are getting rearrested because they're getting arrested, deported, and still trying to. Come back in. Ah, uh, so that yeah, takes yeah, away yeah, from yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was saying there's people who get yeah. in that you don't even know about. Right. I wonder how that compares to, like, the height of European immigration in the 1900s, like when everybody from Ireland and Germany was coming over. Well, like, I was born in the 1900s. I just wasn't born that early. Right. In the I'm wondering, like, is two million equal to that? I mean, I don't know. I just know that it's the largest number in American history to cross the southern border. You know what I'm saying? And, I, you know, I think that calling the bluff because the reality is, and I said this already, is Democrats don't really want that shit either. So don't you're out there. Don't want what? They don't want all those illegal immigrants either. I they, think they do. That's their voting base. They're not, they not registered to vote. No, but they have kids that are. And then their kids end up. Oh, you up. mean later on? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. 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 A lot of brown people are, you know, 
They voting GOP too, especially in different places. Absolutely. Florida, they ride with the GOP a lot. Texas, no, not different, Texas. Different, Texas too. No, Florida, Texas. Cubans, Florida's different because Cubans, Cubans yeah. have an issue with yeah. communism, obviously. Right. So. Cali, brown people probably vote blue, I'm sure. Yeah. It's just different, man. It's just, listen, it's different. I mean, like immigrants tend to be more conservative culturally because they're coming from places that are more conservative. But yeah. if you come to a place where <laughs> the conservative party where you feel the conservative party doesn't accept you, right. it's hard to side with them in a voting situation, even if you agree with them philosophically on yeah, a lot yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's where, like, I would imagine, like, if you're a Mexican that is growing up here in America, you might feel a lack of acceptance, at least how the media portrays the right wing views towards you. But at the same time, you're like, whoa, the things they talk about is way more similar to my home. So what the fuck am I supposed to do over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for real. If you if you're a, if you're a Cuban whose family escaped the communist you, country, you, the idea the of being idea a liberal is crazy. Oh my god! Like anything He's, close what? to it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that shit scared nah, the nah. fuck out yeah, of you because yeah, yeah. you know where it could probably go. Yeah, you're like Bernie Sanders. Shut up. Oh, well, Bernie says he's not closing the door on a 2024 run. I mean. Uh, you know, biology might do that. <laughs> like, you know, Bernie got to be every bit of ninety-seven years old. Y'all talk about dragons. Oh, the dragons! He's seen them. Well, yes, he, we've seen. He had a pet one. Also, he's dragging his nuts all over the gym. <laughs> old ass motherfucker. He's de <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bernie's definitely the old guy, butt naked in the gym. Hell's yes, with he mad is. hair down there and For no sure. meat, <laughs> no meat, all bowls. Uh, Floyd Mayweather, salute to Floyd Mayweather, man. People are saying that Floyd, well, Logan Paul. Logan said that he feels... I know that was Jake Paul. Was it Jake? Jake. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Jake said he feels like Floyd is fucking up his legacy. I don't. <laughs> because... I mean... Floyd Mayweather's legacy is solidified. He's not broke. He earned $20 million to go to goddamn Japan or wherever he was at and Do knock we know this dude that out for of three rounds. What? We know that for a fact? He got what? $20 million? That's the reports. The reports is that he earned $20 million. I mean, he's not, he's not doing it for free. I mean, it's so hard to not do that for $20 million. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? It's so hard. Because if, you, if you're Floyd Mayweather, that's your exercise. Yeah. His whole life, that has been his training. He probably still trains like that all the time. It's not like a guy like Floyd is going to sit back and get fat. Yeah. Floyd is going to be still doing the workout, still sparring a little bit. He's still training other fighters. Yeah. Go out there and get $20 million and knock out somebody in three rounds. He's not even fighting boxers. And I saw people mad at him because he was like, I'm not getting in the ring with Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, like, yeah, why yeah. did I come this far to fight somebody that might yeah. give me a devastating blow? It's all yeah, fun yeah. and games until yeah, yeah. I can't fucking talk yeah. to he my grandkids. Yes. Oh, good for him. He's like, I'm not I mean, trying I'm to... I'm paraphrasing, but that's yeah, the yeah, gist yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but like, yes. Like, he's like, I'm not trying to do anything that's going to get me hurt, which reduces the promotability of it. But at the same time, he's probably going, you have to pay me minimum this. I'm not doing this pay-per-view shit where I got to build up the fight. You guarantee me this. And then you figure out how to promote this thing, and I go in there and I knock you out. And he's not doing it in America. Yeah, I know. Yo, you got to think, somebody like Floyd Mayweather in these other countries is like a mythical figure, probably. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. It's like going to watch Braun play basketball in another country. Like, that shit will probably be sold the fuck out because it's LeBron James. So it's yeah. like, Mayweather, go over there, get these people an exhibition for three rounds, get $20 million, come home. Like, who gives a shit? Yeah, You know what true. I mean? And, the, and, 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 yo, he, Logan Paul is, how big is Logan? Logan looks huge. like a fucking running back. Yo, he's huge. Logan, yeah. He's, Compared to Floyd, yeah, there was right. no reason for Floyd to be in the ring with Logan Paul. Yeah, yeah. So, true. but we all thought that he, we, he was going to finish Logan immediately. The fact that Logan survived is a dub. Yeah, I didn't think, I didn't, I, I mean, I knew he was going to win the fight. Bruh, I thought that Floyd was going to knock him out. Really? Not one punch, but like just TKO. Oh, multiples? Yeah. Maybe. Eh, okay. What else we got? Oh, shit. Let's do some asking idiots, man. Oh, the historically brilliant, the idea of contraception. What is it started in ancient... What, 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 where did so we're talking about happen? contraception. Okay. When did it begin? Started in Why? ancient... <laughs> because it's... Uh, what is it? Uh, God, this is really smart or something. What is the segment we do that we've been doing for oh, 10 years? Oh, positively brilliant. What a fucking idiot. I, I, I tried to come up with some historical idiot. examples of brilliant. Positively brilliant. Yeah. Started, started in ancient Egypt. Egypt. Okay, the silifium, the silphium plant was used as a contraceptive and was incredibly popular in ancient Greece and Rome. Uh, the plants could only be grown in a small area of what is now modern day Libya. Over cultivation led to its eventual extinction. Was that wow. the plant that they used to put on their dicks? Yeah. No, I think women had to uh, stick oh, it in their put vaginas. it in their pussies. No, I think they drank it. I think it was basically an abortion potion. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> in middle aged Europe, 
Uh, some forms them. of male birth control included covering the penis with another man's asshole. Is that what that says? Yes. <laughs> covering the penis entirely inside another man's asshole. <laughs> and that won't get a girl pregnant. That is very true, That's Chris. True. This is great. True. I you. like this. Uh, also included covering the penis in tar or soaking it in onion juice. Okay. Uh, then no woman will fuck you. So that's really smart. In China, glands condoms covering only the head of the penis were made of oiled silk paper or of lamb intestines. Jesus Christ. In Japan, condoms called kabutogata were made of tortoise shell or animal horn. So how'd they get the lamb intestines? From fucking the lambs? Obviously. Put that dick deep in a lamb. Yeah, yeah. And his stomach come out uh, with the intestines on your cock. Uh. Condoms were popularized in Europe after outbreaks of syphilis in 1495. Most popular was a linen condom meant Disgusting. to cover the glands of the penis held on with a ribbon. What fire. would a Jamaican call a linen condom? <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> what the fuck would a Jamaican call a, a linen condom? Oh, a linen bro? condom? Yeah, what bro. What would they call it? A sperm clot? A sp <laughs> what would you call it? A, a skeet clot? You fucking cum, cum clot. You cum clot. You fucking cum clot. Rubber condoms were introduced to America by Charles Goodyear in Hilarious. 1839. Then he went on to make the wheel. Right. Wow. <laughs> they became popular because they were reusable. That's crazy. He went on dude. to make tires, bro. Yeah, that's crazy. Condoms were legalized in America after World War I and by World War II were standard issue to American soldiers. The insult scumbag was originally a slang word for <laughs> wow. condom, like Dude, a comeback. Yeah, get rid of the S, bro. Whoa. The scum and the comeback. Comeback is Yo, some calling shit, somebody bro. a comeback, comeback is, crazy, is wild. Bro. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, you don't even swallow it. You just hold it. It's just God. in you. Golly. He's walking around with cum in you. God. Oh, this was wild. What was it? I just saw this. I, 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 what a fucking idiot. Yeah, man. A father and son duo were ID'd in the PNB rock murder. No. According to TMZ, Freddie Lee Tron was named a person of interest in PNB Rock's murder, was allegedly in cahoots with his son to carry out the crime. Tron's 17 year old son has been identified as the shooter, while Tron repeatedly drove the getaway, reportedly drove the getaway car. Police say the pair were already in the parking lot when PNB pulled up, so there's no connection between his baby mama posting on. Social, the 17-year-old son and Tron's wife, Chantel Tron, have already been arrested. The elder Tron is on the run and considered armed and dangerous. They probably arrested the wife for knowing and not <laughs> uh, turning them in. Jesus. It, I mean, you know what's so interesting about this? Um, we, we, we said this a couple of weeks ago about, like, why would y'all blame the baby mamas if people weren't already at the restaurant? You know what I'm saying? Like, if people didn't see them walking in, if people weren't eating in there. Like, we, we said this. But it's wild that the police came out and said that they thought it probably happened because yeah, of that was her reckless. Posting. Like, why? Was like, reckless. how does the police that not know? Super I, I understand the digital dickheads on social media jumping to conclusion, but nah. why would the police say that? was that? crazy. I think the police said that because of social media. Yep. I agree. Wow. I really do. I think the police saw what was happening on social media and instead You're of right. like, continuing to do their actual police work, they just ran with what social media was wow. saying. Because common sense should tell you that if a guy pulls up to a restaurant, all that jewelry on, there's people at the restaurant. Bro. Yeah. Like, that shit is fucked. But a father-son duo? Nah. Not good. How, like, not good. You have, like, that's, we talk about, you know, breaking generational curses, man. Can't do it. My God. Like, you have, you <laughs> failed, your, bless you, bless you, you failed your child on every. Every level. Every level. Level. Every level. Like, Jesus Christ. There's, I mean, there's some fucked up things my dad taught me, but never that. No, nah, that's heartbreaking. You bro. know what I mean? That's heartbreaking. Man, bro. And the, and the kid, it's like 17 years old, led wrong by his father. Now he's going to spend the rest of his life in prison because he was led wrong by his father. Can you imagine Yo. sitting in the car and being like, all right, here, take this. Imagine the dad telling him, I didn't tell you to kill him. Who sh well, well, who shot him? This is actually the son. They awesome. said the son. son. So the son shot him. Yeah. So I told you to rob him. I didn't tell you to kill him, son. Pretty I wonder much. if robbing with your kid or your father increases the likelihood of using the weapon because you you can't imagine your dad or your son dying. Like, let's say the guy you're robbing looks like he's going to pull something out. You're like, holy shit, is he going to shoot my dad? Or you don't want to be embarrassed in front of your dad. Or you don't want... Point. Yeah, point. so if you pull out... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, right. you go in there and you pull out the gun and he not giving up what you want. 
and y'all end up in a little squabble. There's, you know what I mean? And you might be losing. You're like, oh, shoot. You know, there's you, a thing you don't want to go back yeah. empty handed to your partner. You, there's a thing with boxing. Uh, they say like the, so I'm going to probably mess this up, but like the number of boxers that have like died in the ring or something like that, like the percentage that their father trained them is super high. Uh-huh. And it's a thing about like <laughs> the dad doesn't throw in the towel. Wow. And the son doesn't want to, Quit, quit in front wow, of his dad. Wow, right? wow, wow. And it's wow, like heartbreaking wow, to even think about, wow, but you also look wow. at a situation like that, like maybe that plays in, like the idea of quitting in front of my father, I, I would never want to do it, but with a thing like boxing or like fucking, or disappointing or something like that when you're robbing somebody, it leads to this. It's yeah, like, man. oh, yeah, yeah. And nobody wants to disappoint daddy, which is wild. Because like, like, daddy's disappointing son by even being involved in this by shit. By even being involved. Like you're supposed to keep your son totally away from that life. Yeah. Like, that's not supposed to be your partner, bro. Yeah. Even if you still in the streets, yo, that your son, you're supposed to be teaching your son a whole nother way, man. Yeah. That shit is heartbreaking, man. Rest in peace to, you know, PNB Rock and yeah. send the healing energy to his family and his, his his girl who had to witness all of that. That shit is, man, heartbreaking. Um, Brett Favre, salute the welfare queen, Brett Favre. What is this story? Can you explain this story? Yeah, it's actually a uh, former governor of Mississippi, Phil Bryant. Um, you know, he's it's a civil lawsuit against him for the misuse of state welfare funds because, yeah, Favre pressed Mississippi state officials for help in paying for new sports facilities at the University of Southern Mississippi months after being told by then Governor Phil Bryant that the misuse of state welfare funds could be illegal. So it was like five million dollars that they used in state welfare funds for this volleyball. You know, because his daughter played on the volleyball team. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, so he he petitioned the government to use it for volleyball, or he had control of the cash and he chose to use it. It, it sounds like it was like some back channel stuff where he had a relationship with the governor. Yeah. He knew this money was out there. He convinced the guy to reroute it, but kind of did a little thing where he's like, I don't want to do anything illegal here. Yeah. But knew that the money was supposed to go. But he's lobbying. He's not making this. <laughs> because what the no, way no, I they was... took the money from the state welfare fund. But but he doesn't have the power to take it himself. He has to lobby a government official. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. So ultimately, yeah, yeah. the government official is responsible for, he was... Well, Fav's still a piece of shit because he knew where the money was coming from. Of, uh, of course, yeah. there's no question. But like, there's a person whose job it is it is to deal with pieces of shit. Yeah, like yeah, as yeah, a politician, yeah. you have pieces of shit constantly telling you where money should go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that guy dealt with that guy chose not to tell the piece of shit Brett Favre yeah, yeah. what to do with the money. It's wild. So they're, they're both culpable. It's just oh, the yeah. way I've been reading headlines is like Brett Favre has control of this well, money. He's a I'm celebrity. Like, exactly. They they they're yeah. using his name to yeah. And, and what's wild about the situation is that I'm sure they could have got the money. <laughs> I mean, between, where's Brett Favre? Between, exactly. Five million. Come, on, yeah. Come on, B. Between Brett Favre and state funds, they could have got shit together. Why like, they need $5 million for volley, women's volleyball? Bro, you'd be... I don't... I mean, it's building a stadium. It's building a whole stadium. Do we need a stadium for that? <laughs> like... You need a sandbox? Yeah, like, come on, bro. <laughs> come the fuck on. But you, you, you'll realize, too, man, like, especially somebody like Brett Favre, I do it all the time in South Carolina. You know, I'll come out of my pocket for things because... It calls the state's bluff. Yeah. And you know who schools me to a lot of this? Who? Other politicians. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Other politicians, they're like, look, this is what I need you to do. You pay for this, right? Right? Because there's already state funding for it. Yeah. But when you pay for it, you know, it'll be a headline. And, you know, people will be like, oh, well, you know, Charlemagne just did this. So it'll make the state feel like they got to step it up. And and it's happened every single I'm talking about simple, it could be something as simple as, you know, Turkey drives, right, right. Wow. book bag right. giveaways. Like they, there's like I, when I started doing mine like seven, eight years ago, it's like two or three that the town does now. This is what we want, you know. That's what exactly. That's exactly what you want, you know. Um, there's something. There's something else I'm, I'm I'm doing in my my hometown right now. I thought. I actually thought I could come out of pocket for it until they told me how much it costs. I was like, well, like, no, we gonna I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. That, I didn't think it would cost that much, but. They got a state fund for that. They got a fund. So now that I want to do it. Can you tell us what it is? Or? I don't want to say. Okay. I, I like to, I'll wait till it's done. But when, when now that I want to do it, they want to get it done. And it's, right. it's state funding for that. So it's just like, yo, Brett Favre could have got that fucking money, bro, for that volleyball stadium. He, he should have just came out of pocket. Like, yo, I got 1.5 for it. What's up? Yeah, exactly. State would have came with the rest. Exactly. Um, This is wild. Talk to me. I can't pronounce his name. That's why Ime I don't want to talk Udoka, to him. Ime Udoka, who's a coach of the Celtics, Nia Long's husband. Uh, he's in a scandal right now. He's been suspended for the season. 
and um, they got a ten year old son together. Yeah. Um was having an affair with a Celtics employee who helped make all his travel a arrangements. Feudo, right? It, well, he was also well, smashing uh, that mean, that Brad mean, Stevens' it, assistant. I don't. I know it's an executive <laughs> assistant. Say again. It's an executive assistant. I don't know if it was Brad Stevens. This is yeah, assistant. it was Brad's. Yeah, man. I mean, listen, man. Reportedly, this also included organizing travel with fiance. That, I, the knee along of this story, that's uh, that's not even, that shouldn't even be part of this story. The woman was involved, whatever. The moral of the story is this. The name of the employee has not been revealed. There's a lot to this, right? Because there's a whole other story other than the executive assistant. I'm sure you've heard. Which is? I'm not saying. That's not my place to say. When it, If it comes out, it can comes out. Can we just out. cut it? And you just say it Well, it's just, it's just I mean, I, well, we it's can, not. for this, it's fine. Okay. Here's my thing, right? Yeah. And I'm not judging the brother. I think what Shaq said is brilliant. You know, he was a serial cheater. I definitely was a cheater. So I'm not judging the brother at all. I just want us men to start having conversations about self-sabotage. And what I mean by that is, what makes you be in a position like that? You're the coach of one of the most historic franchises, not just in the NBA, in the, the, the world, period. You're black. Mm -hmm. In that racist city of Boston, they probably... Don't even want you as the coach. They was shitting. In, uh, they were shitting in Bill Russell's bed, bro. I mean, again, Bill Russell won them what 16, 11 championships. Thirteen. Thirteen. You know what I mean? Was it eleven? And I and I know times change, uh, right? I know times change. So yes, my point is, why would you put your penis before your paycheck? What what in a man makes them have to go sleep with this person's wife that works? For this team, like power, man, addiction to power. But where's the power? You're already powerful. What what more power can you get from that? Why is Putin invading Ukraine, bro? Because he wants Ukraine. That makes more sense. He wants the land. Yeah. <laughs> Why is NATO expanding into Ukraine? It's like everybody wants to just a little bit more. It's never enough. I think that guy's playing himself. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, if my wife did that, I'd say, you happy in this marriage? Like, you went out. Let's talk about it privately. But to then go on a vendetta to try to get the other guy fired publicly it's like yeah because that's don't what you want to face the facts yeah because face face, face the facts yeah because it has nothing to do with him because the reality is the other employee hasn't been named but uh, allegedly it's team policy right like it's a, a violation of codes of conduct within the organization so the woman should be suspended as well don't you think it's a power dynamic I don't care everybody keeps saying that but I don't care about that the Rules are rules. No, because... They said it was consensual, so... Yeah, I know, but... Uh, he didn't force her to do it. They said it was an intimate, consensual relationship. No, no, I'm telling you how, like, corporations handle this shit. I where think it's that's like, whack. It, if you're in a position of... What, they, what corporations have to do is protect themselves from sociopaths like Weinstein, right? So if you have a person in a position of power, he has to ask permission to engage with any other employee so that you can check with that employee and make sure it's good because what has happened before is She's Weinstein... Married. Yeah, but Weinstein and their cronies... The motherfuckers that are that are, I don't want to say just as bad as Weinstein, but like whatever is right next to it, the ones who protected him and then told all the girls to shut the fuck up, like they are complicit with that kind of shit. I agree. So this happens at organizations. But don't you think Weinstein was on some other shit though? Because he was saying telling women, I'm not if saying you want these this are the movie role, You know what I mean? But that the fear is that these people in positions of power are saying that to employees and the employees don't have a place to complain, so they just go do it. Or they're terrified if they do complain, they'll be fired because it's like, I'm just a secretary. You don't need me. That's the head coach of the Boston Celtics that went to NBA Finals. Like, if, 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 if that was the case, though, wouldn't, well, they, wouldn't they just put that out? Because now you can just fire them. Yeah, if he was doing that type of shit. Now there is, was... but you also might not want to be the person that removed the head coach from the team that made it to the NBA Finals. He's wilding, like, he wilding. I guess, but you might not want all that public animosity. Also, you're a married woman. There's other things. Like, listen, I, I would love if there weren't, I'm not calling him a sociopath. I would love if there weren't sociopaths that were abusing their power and trying to have sex with women that they worked with and then threatening them if they don't. Mm -hmm. I think in every relationship, there's a power dynamic. I mean, if you really want to talk about the power dynamics of sex, like, Women have all the power. We literally cannot have sex with women unless they say yes. So they have 100% of the power. We have 0% of the power. It, to act like power dynamics don't exist within sexual dynamics is not true. But what is important is that everybody has choice and important that these women that work for these organizations can say, I'm not interested. And the man will not hold that against them. That's what we all hope, right? Well, if that's the case, don't put out as an organization that it was an intimate, consensual relationship. Because when you put out that it was an intimate, consensual relationship, my next question is, well, how come she's not suspended as well? If if it's a if it's a violation of 
or the team's policies and the organization's policies, why isn't she suspended? I, listen, I'm with you 100%. I think they backtracked from that a little bit and started to say there was like a harassment element to it. Mm-hmm. That maybe he made unwanted... There's there's a few other consensual and then it comes. there's a few other employees that maybe like talked out. Here's right. the thing that I that I think is going on is I think that the organization has known this the whole time, and that's why none of us can even say this guy's name. And he is a black head coach of one of the most historic franchises in history that made it to the NBA Finals and almost won the NBA Finals. Please believe they, they, they didn't almost win. The they could have won the NBA they, finals. They game six. Okay. Like, my point is it wasn't it wasn't like an absolute sweep. It was it was there they was competitive. Won, in my opinion. Oh, okay. Have. Stop. Uh, let's not take away from the point. Yes, right. you're right. You have a black head coach of an NBA franchise, one of the most historic NBA franchises in history. Okay. That is incredibly successful and his coaching made them successful. They sucked in the beginning yeah. and the team got together because of his coaching, yeah. took them to the NBA finals, and they were They won two games in the NBA final. They could have potentially won. And the fact that we can't pronounce his name, to me, and let me go conspiracy, is they knew this motherfucker was a wild dude. And they knew that they were like, we can't virtue single because please believe the NBA would love nothing more than to make this this guy, the golden goose. Hey, we we do have black coaches coaching here in the NBA, and the NBA is about taking these uh the about black people, making them in powerful positions, and making sure they rise to the top. They would love for this to be their golden yeah, yeah, goose, yeah. but then they got the call, which was he's dicking down everybody on the fucking team, bro. We cannot do it, and that's why nobody knows this motherfucker's name, bro. Bro, you got to bring Doctor Umar to sit on the bench, bro. <laughs> I'm serious, Doctor Umar got to come in that organization because if you a black man thinking that you gonna Get away with fucking white wives. You are out of your out mind. Out of your mind, bro. No like you're, out of, you're out of your mind. But, but I, am I, I, do you hear what I'm saying? I hear that? exactly what you're saying. Come on. My, my thing is, as a man who, you know, d- deals with his own insecurities, has fed his ego through other women, yeah. you know, who who has had that, that lack of worthiness to yeah. where I felt like, you know, sleeping with a whole bunch of other women yeah. would feel that. I want to know what's going on in men when they get to that point where they self-sabotage over women, over other vagina. Like, you did not have to sleep with that married woman, bro. That's yeah. why, that, this is why it's we scream black be, men don't cheat. But it's possible to be a great coach and a fucking idiot. And, yes, and I'm not saying he's a fucking but idiot. But why is he an idiot? Is no, no, what I'm, but I'm not to... saying he's a fucking idiot because he cheated. I'm saying he cheated like a fucking idiot. No, I think he's an idiot because he cheated too. Okay, listen. Yeah, I do. I again, do. again, I don't know where they are in the relationship. And again, I don't know what's going on in their life. And I don't know the agreement that he might have with his wife. Again, I don't know. So I can't speculate oh, no, on that. No, Nia, Nia already put it out that she was blind. I, I, I know, I know, I know. But that's also... N- okay, I, I get what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? I can't it, judge a man in, I'm with in, you because I don't know what he's dealing with and what's going on in their relationship. But why, but why, why shit where you live? That, that's what. That's, that's my thing. That's why he's you a fucking idiot. You don't have to cheat in the organization. He's a fucking idiot because he risked everything that he That's worked his whole I'm career saying. for when he could have done That's that it. shit on the road. You cheat on you you cheat outside the organization, bro. You still, you know, you still wrong for cheating, but at least you don't you're think there's a job. waitress at some fucking chowder spot that would suck your point. dick on a Saturday? <laughs> of course they would. God damn. What, dude? What? <laughs> something about the chowder and the sucking of the dick. I was just say, you go to a bar. Just, <laughs> those words hit, bro. You don't think it's some chick who's going to suck your dick at a chowder spot? Whoa. <laughs> that shit hit, bro. I got a gift, bro. I don't know what to tell you. I got a gift. I got some gift. Yeah, I, think, I, I really do want men to explore that, man. Only because, like, man, I have not seen a man yet win from cheating, bro. And I'm talking about like this. I love my dad to death. My now dad you got tells me thinking. Me, huh? Now you got me thinking. Talk to me. Now who who won from cheating? Now you got me going, It's like right. immigrants. You don't know half of the ones out there right there, right? Bang, bang, bang. No, that's true. Bang, that's bang, true. bang. But, but, but I'm, I'm, the ones I've seen in my life, I haven't seen it work for them, bro. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? That goes to my pops and everything else. It's like, yo, what is it that makes you be in a great situation? I can understand when you're I mean, young, you all make Clinton. mistakes. Why? You know what I'm saying? I think it's the risk for some people. It's got that's got to be something psychological. Like they you got to talk to I, a therapist. I think it's. Bro. I think it's. Yeah. I think it's. It's. It's the risk is like doing something naughty. Right. I think that's what, and they're searching for more naughty. It's like the people who have the adrenaline re- rush and they go skydiving. So right. what if you are afraid of heights and you can't go skydiving? Where else can I get that adrenaline? Right. I'm gonna do something naughty. I'd rather skydive with no parachute than cheat on my wife, bro. Respect, bro. <laughs> I'm not even lying. Respect. I'm more. Thank God afraid. you didn't do that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more Scramble afraid back. of of what cheating on my wife would do to her and my family than I am of jumping out of a plane with no parachute. Yeah, 
I think that's reasonable. And that's beautiful. Think about this for a second. Yeah. Yes, I'm true. I'm serious. Yeah, but you also believe okay. you can fly. So <laughs> that's something about you that you would, would you believe, rather me I believe I can fly or believe I can cheat? I don't believe I, I can would cheat. rather you believe you can cheat no. than believe you can fly. No, I rather believe I can fly. I like you. <laughs> and and you will die if you believe you can I'll fly. I'll die if I cheat. No, you won't. Now my wife kills me. Now the kids got to be. She's not killing you. I don't She's know, bro. I, I'm you. not taking no chances. I'm 44 years old. I and respect that. And that's, that's my thing. Like, People like this, they're older. Bill Clinton is old. Like, why do you make these mistakes at that age? Well, you could argue that that need for excitement or risk or whatever is also what made them great. Yes. You know, like Bill yeah. Clinton had a certain energy. Yes. I'm never going to have that, right? He had it. Well, where did he get it? It came from a lot of different sources. Maybe yeah. I can't say the guy's name either. But like, yeah. what do you mean different? When you say energy, like the need. Because girls for- like him, bro. Oh, yeah. He's a good looking guy. Yeah, they He's like successful. And you by know, him, like- I'm talking about the Celtics coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whose name I can't pronounce. Yeah. Ime. Udoka. I'm just saying, like, there's there's guys like Clinton, they had a need for energy all the time. They had a need for people to love them. They yeah. had to always constantly feed that kind of vibe around them. And I guess sometimes it expresses itself in a different way. I don't know. Would you give up the presidency for Monica Lewinsky? No, no. that's my point. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's, wild, like, that's my point. I'm not trying to say like that Monica is not smashable, but like Giving up the presidency, bro. That's why you got to put these things in financial perspective. Like, uh, the Celtics coach whose name I can't pronounce. Bill Clinton should have said that. What? Do you really think I'd give up the presidency for her? Well, I think you like, think yo, he was going to have to give it up. Because if you look at the president. Yeah, that's not an impeachable offense. Yeah. Uh, John Kennedy had 5,000 girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, part of I'm the sure presidency. they all did. Yeah. Right. I'm sure they all do. Like, you know what I mean? FDR I'm sure had a mistress, uh, everybody. I'm right. sure. Yeah, the same thing that's going to make you preg- president is also... <laughs> the same thing that's going to make pregnant. you pregnant. The same right. thing that's going to make you pregnant. <laughs> but yeah, the thing that's going to make you president is going to show up in other ways, too. And right. some of those ways might not be as positive. And that's a shame. You got, That's why it's, you know, it's rare that you get people that have power. The same drive for power can, you know, make you do evil things. Is it a drive for power, things. though? That's why I said you got to put it in financial perspectives because if I'm the Celtics coach, right, Let's. I just want guys to understand what happened. They probably was going to franchise this guy as a coach. He took him to the NBA Finals his first year in the league. You know what I'm saying? I'm, they're going to have a great year this year as well. This guy probably lost like $50, $60 million, $70 million, some crazy number because he had to sleep with somebody's wife in the organization. And people's assistants. People's assi- and- like. But that's what successful guys do. They compartmentalize things, right? And they take immense risk. Right. Well, we got to stop compartmentalizing and start thinking on a macro level. That's right. all I'm trying to tell men right now. Yeah. Like, whatever is in you that's causing you to self-sabotage in that way, we got to go fix, bro. That's why I'm so big on therapy and everything else. There's a great book I read called The Big Leap that talks about when people get to that certain point and end up self-sabotaging. Yeah. We got to find a way to stop self-destructing in this way. Yeah. That's That's... That's what I get from these conversations. And I'm not chastising this brother at all because I, I definitely, you know, cheated. But I, 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 I realized the path I was going. I'm looking, to my, I'm looking, I'm like, so maybe this is his bottom. But he's already lost it. What, you got to stop need, yourself before you get to nah, that. But a lot of people don't, man. Sometimes oh. they need to hit the hit rock bottom in order. To, I mean, he's only getting he's suspended for one season. Like, Bro, they said, no, 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 no. The Celtics said you're suspended for one year and we're going to reevaluate. When that oh, yeah. They, if over. they win this year, my... Well, yeah. based on out the information here. that's out there, I don't know what really happened. I'd yeah. hire this guy as a coach. I don't think he did anything that's, like, so I mean, terrible. Nah, if he fucked people in the organization's Why, wife, bro? what's going to happen is you're going to create... No, you're going to create an environment where everybody around him doesn't want to introduce their wife to them. <laughs> right? And, that's and, important. And, and, like, and, and you're kind of showing that you're not really a leader of men. How can you be a leader of men if you're still uh, making decisions see, like that? See, I think the NBA players might like that because they're wild. <laughs> Coach, you got Neil Long at the crib, bro. From the pictures I saw, basic. No accessories. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, nothing. There's, you got to at least be able to be like, I couldn't resist. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I'm looking at like You look like a psychopath. Like, why would yeah. you do that? Yeah. That? Yeah. Oh. Neil's so sweet, too. And be- it's Nia fucking long. Yeah, she's beautiful. Come on, man. Yeah. It's Nia fucking long, man. Man, we're, we're odd, man. We're odd. We're odd. I'm, 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 I'm trying not to be odd. That's why I go to therapy. 
I don't want that. Like, I, we really have to find a way to stop self-sabotaging this, man. I'm, I'm sick of it. Yeah. Uh, let's do some asking idiots. Oh, salute to, um, salute to Young Miami, too, man. I feel you, Young Miami. I think you have the potential to be the next Black Oprah as well. Oh, let's go. Okay. I feel you. All right, let's get some asking idiots. Um, salute to Chief Keith, too. I saw TMZ run up on Chief Keith asking those wild-ass questions. You know what I'm saying? Trying to make it look like I was trying to play Chief Keef. I wasn't trying to play. I never said Chief Keef wasn't influential. I just said he's not one of the four most influential rappers ever, in my humble opinion. Yeah, that's fine. That's all. Uh, I Am Woods. What is Charlotte's top three favorite books? Great question, I Am Woods. Um, the Autobiography of Malcolm X uh, by Alex Haley. The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. And Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday. Woo! Those are my top three favorite books. I'm reading Ryan's new book right now, too, called uh, Discipline is Destiny, um, The Power of Self-Control. Let's go. What you motherfuckers should read. This is what I'm talking about, having the power of self-control. What movie characters would you and your closest circle fit slash remake Ocean's Eleven? Not even a question. You think Ocean's Eleven? That's the movie that I will remake at some point. And it won't be the same exact movie. I, I be obviously. thinking of Training Day. But a, dy a dynamic, yes. Ooh, I don't know Training why. Day. I've watched Training Ooh. Day a lot and I've always imagined myself playing the Lonzo role, you playing the Hoyt role, Sick. Duval is Snoop in the wheelchair. Sick. You know what I'm saying? Go get some of Letty's cousins to play the Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've, all, I've, always, I've always thought about that, you know? I just get a couple uh, more. Which move? Uh, w. Nisha. Which move, business or life, are you most proud of the other four and why? Ooh. Oh, I'm proud uh, you uh, went faithful, man. I think that's beautiful. And like investing in yourself and your family, that's fire. You know what's interesting about that? I, I, I that, that was something I saw you do early on because mm -hmm. you was with an, another woman and it was, you was faithful. Yeah. Like I was like, Oh shit, Schultz is really faithful. And you know how you know when somebody's really faithful? Yeah. When you're on that road. <laughs> when, when, when he, Schultz knows. I'll be on the road out here. <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Schultz be making them laugh. I'm leaning over like. <laughs> <Man or less. laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so when I saw that, like, Schultz is, I'm like, oh, damn, Schultz is really, really faithful. Like, yeah, this guy is crazy. I res no, I'm just saying. <laughs> I, re I respect that. I remember one time, Schultz looked at me and Schultz goes, the need for you to tell me that. Why? <laughs> Yo, son, like, this what guy, kind of insecurity are you This guy is crazy. The need for you to tell <laughs> This guy is absolutely crazy. This but no, absolutely but time out. Crazy. Don't, that's the kind yeah. of checking that men should do. Yeah. I said that shit to you trying to feed my ego and you saw right through that shit like with, with yeah. the need to tell me that. Yeah. Like, what like, what insecurities you are you dealing with? I, re I, re I don't know if you remember that. I remember. I remember it vividly. Oh, okay. I remember exactly. What, you know, I'm not, let me shut up. Yeah, but you I do remember. shut up. But I remember <laughs> exactly <laughs> what you said. That <laughs> shit was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely hilarious, but it was oh. just, yeah. I love being faithful, man. Being yeah. faithful is so special. Right? <sighs> Last question. Jake Farrell. Jake Farrell says, would you rather spend one year in federal prison, three in jail, or five active combat military duty? I don't even know what that... Oh, that means years? I'm doing the military. I mean... Hold on, hold on. Active combat military duty or one in mean? federal? First of all, I think he got this wrong. Jail is worse than fed. Now, right, jail right. is the crazy one year in fed. Yeah, one year. One in year fed. in fed. Fed is where like the felons go, that's and right. they're like, "Yo, everybody behave." Oh no, no, no. Feds is feds is actually smooth. That's what I'm that's saying. What I'm saying. Fed oh yeah, yeah. Oh my bad, my jail. bad. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, three yeah, is yeah, jail could be Rikers. Yeah. So fed, five years active combat military duty, like you get shot at every day. I'd rather have dicks thrown at me once in a while <laughs> than yeah, shot at every day. Yeah, you're right. Damn, I ain't even. Th I'm, yeah, I'm, you yeah, know that, bro, that's one of them trick on. questions where you like, I choose military. Now nah, I'm taking. So I'm supposed to be a patriot, but at the same time, God damn, yeah, bro. Yeah, I'm taking that goddamn one year in federal prison. Eighty five percent, you do, you be out in like seven, eight months. You yeah, know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm taking that all day, Jake Farrell. And I'm not fucking. You ain't fucking within eight months in federal prison. Yeah, three in Rikers. Hey, bro. They might change your life. Bro. Might they might? What the Mexicans said in training day? You ever had your ship pushed in? Yeah, you ever had your ship, you pushed, ship in. pushed in? Yeah. All right. Uh, as always, if you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. 
What if you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit? You're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.